2023 senior night for our football team, band members, and cheerleaders. At halftime, we will celebrate our cheerleaders and band members, but now we will take the time to recognize our 12 Varsity Carson Memorial football seniors. Our first senior tonight is Kevin Commandant. Kevin is in his first year playing football, and he will also be recognized at halftime with the band. Tonight he is joined by his mother, Lucy. His favorite moment at Carson is doing down-ups at practice till his arm hurts. They have taught him a lot about never being late to practice again. To his mom, thank you for the support and trust you gave me throughout my high school journey. To his coaches, thank you for making me reach the potential I never knew I had. And to his teammates, thank you for a great season and making football fun and an amazing experience. Thank you, Kevin. Our next senior is Edgar Cueva. Edgar is a four-year varsity football player and is joined tonight by his mom, Grace, his father, Edgar, stepmom, Connie, stepdad, Alex, and his brothers, Michael, Christian, and Jalen. His favorite moment at Garth is giving his friends haircuts and running onto the field with my teammates on game days. To his parents, thank you guys for everything you do for me. This is only the beginning. Love you guys. To his coaches, thank you for all the love and support in the championship meetings, and thanks to Coach Levy for trusting me to cut your hair. And to his teammates, I'm going to miss you guys. Be great in life. Easy cuts out. Thank you, Edgar. Our next senior, Ian Harrison. Ian is a two-year varsity football player, two years on varsity track. He is joined tonight by his parents, Kim and Mike, and his siblings, Gabriella and Olivia. His favorite memory at Carson was the first day on campus after transfer from Stockdale. Everyone was so welcoming and positive, which allowed him to be excited about school every day. To his parents, thank you for your unconditional love, support, and sacrifice you guys will always make for my siblings and myself. Love you guys. To his coaches, thank you for continuing to coach and develop me into the man I am today. The championship meetings will definitely shape who I am in the future. And to his teammates, thank you guys for being the brothers that I never had. Thank you, Ian. Our next senior, Jonathan Lester. Johnny is a four-year varsity football player, three years in basketball, four years at PLTW. He's joined tonight by his mother, Genevieve, and his grandmother, and Bradley Horton. His favorite moment at Garza is beating rival BCHS on their senior night. To his mom, I'm grateful for all the hard work, sacrifice, and love. I promise it'll be worth it. To his teammates, John 414, the giant in front of you is never bigger than the God inside of you. Thank you, Johnny. Next up, RJ Marquez. RJ has played football at Garza's for three years. Tonight he's joined by his mother, Shannon. His favorite moment at Garza's is hanging out with his friends at lunch and talking about football. To his mother, thank you for everything you've done for me and giving me the opportunity to attend Garza's. To his coaches, thank you for the life lessons you guys have taught me as well as coaching me. And to his teammates, love y'all boys. Thank you, RJ. Next up, Keegan McCarthy. Keegan is a three-year varsity football player, guards, two-year track and field, while four-year member at CSF, two years on NHS, one year helping hands club in the senior class rep in ASB. Tonight he's joined by his mother Shauna, his grand his grandparents, Steve and Mary Ellen, and his brother Kieran. His favorite moment at Garces is the splat ball fights they would have had in the parking lot and on the field. To his parents and grandparents, thank you for everything that you've done for me and all the sacrifices you've done to allow me to be at Garces the past three years. To his coaches, thank you for the opportunity to be part of this team the past three years. And finally, to his teammates, thank you guys for accepting me when I transferred. You have made the last three years the best. Love you guys. Thank you, Kagan. Next up, Jacob. Ruiz. Jacob is a four-year varsity football player and is joined tonight by his parents, Tina and Xavier, and his brothers, Isaiah, Nick, and Mark. His favorite moment at Carson is watching all his friends grow into the friendships that they have today. To his parents, thank you guys for everything. None of this is possible without your support. Love you guys. To his coaches, thank you for believing me and trusting me that I will do the job that I was assigned. And to his teammates, I'm going to miss every one of you. You can't wait to see where God will guide us, all the young ones, as they come up. Thank you, Jacob. Our next senior, Chris Sanchez. Chris is a four-year football and basketball player here at Garces. Tonight is joined by his parents, Sandy and Chris, and his brother, Frankie. His favorite moment at Garces would be going to any sporting event with his friends and having a great time. 
to his parents, mom and dad, I wouldn't be able to be where I am in life and be who I am without you. To his coaches, I want to thank all my coaches for the funny, insightful moments during practice. The championship meetings really helped me have a different attitude in life. And to his teammates, thanks for all the memories and always being there when I needed you. 212. Thank you, Chris. Next up, Daniel Sanchez. Daniel has played football guards the past two years. He's joined tonight by his parents, Nancy and Mario. His favorite moment at Garces is in the hot summer practice with the team and listen to Coach Coop yell. His uh, to his parents, thank you guys for all your hard work and always supporting me. I love you. To his coaches, thank you for giving me an opportunity and show us how to be men. And finally, to his teammates, thank you guys for all the laughs and good times. Thank you, Daniel. Our next senior, Luke Taylor. Luke is a two-year varsity football player and basketball player while also a member of the Helping Hands Club and Going Gold Club. He is joined by his parents, Abby and Tracy, his sister Jenna, and his brother Noah. His favorite moment at Garces was a pick six last week against BCHS and being coached by Coach Gola and this amazing coaching staff at Garces. To his parents, I love you and thank you, Mom and Dad, for all your support in my life, especially my high school career. Thank you for raising me to be a man. To his coaches, thank you for all the hard work and endless efforts you put into this team. You have all been amazing influences in my life. You helped shape the man I am today. And to his teammates, love you boys. No one I'd rather go to war with than the boys on the field. Thank you, Luke. Our next senior, Nathaniel Wallace. Nate is a four-year varsity football player and four-year varsity track athlete. Tonight he's joined by his parents, Lorena and Daniel, his sister Lauren, and Lila and brothers Lawrence and Daniel. His favorite moment at Garces is the sophomore year throwing a party in the restroom and getting busted by Mr. Olson. To his parents, I thank both of you for being the pillars of strength. The guidance and unconditional love has shaped me into the person I am today. As we stand here on this field, I'm reminded of the values you've instilled in me and the determination, perseverance of teamwork. You're all the reason for my passion in football. Thank you for being my greatest inspiration. I love you. To his coaches, thank you for unwavering support, guidance, and inspiration. I will cherish your wisdom and the memories. 212, heck yeah, and bring it. And finally, to his teammates, my brothers, our brotherhood shared experiences have made this journey unforgettable. Love y'all. Thank you, Nate. And last, but definitely not least, Cage Williams. Cage is a four-year varsity football player while also running track all four years and one year playing basketball. Tonight, he's joined by his parents, Crystal and EJ. His favorite moment at Carson is having the team dinners with the fellas and all the great conversations. To his parents, Mom, thank you for everything you did for me and the sacrifice of your time late to be in at work in the morning for me. I love you. Dad, thank you for pushing me throughout my life. And to his coaches, thank you for challenging us during practice. I grew off that and made me think about things a little bit differently. And to his teammates, I want to let you guys know that all, you're all my brothers and we'll ride with you until, the, until it's over. Love you all, 212. Thank you, Cage. One more big round of applause for our 12 Garces Memorial football seniors and their parents. Parents, thank you so much for your unwavering support. Enjoy the evening. At halftime, we will celebrate our senior band members and our senior cheerleaders.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Garces Memorial Sportsnet here on the Garces Athletics YouTube channel. I'm Sports Information Director Trevor Horn. And once again, I am joined by the one, the only, do not allow him to call you old, call himself old, the legendary John Finucchi. Coach, here we are, senior night already. We just concluded our senior night for our 12 varsity football seniors. And here they are ready to take on the Centennial Golden Hawks. And to say that this game has playoff impl implications is saying it lightly. An understatement, absolutely. An absolutely understatement. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not understand exactly what's going on. So the central section of Division I playoffs is a 12-team bracket. Every other bracket from four through two through six are 16-team brackets. Right now, your Garces Rams are sitting in the 12th spot in Division I, if you could believe that. With a three and five record, they are sitting at the 12th spot in Division I if the season were to end right now. There are two teams ahead of the Rams. They're actually officially ranked 15th in the section. The problem is two of those teams that are ranked ahead of them, Central Valley Christian and Lamore, are both D3 bases. Why do I bring that up? Well, because in the central section playoff seating, you can only play in your division base that you're in or go up one division or down one division, which means if you were a division one team, you either play division one or you move down to division two. If you're division two, you can go up to one, you can play two or go down to three. If you're three, same thing, you can go only up to two, play three or go down to four and so on and so forth. There's one other team that's ahead of the Rams in the rankings right now, and that is Buchanan. The problem with Buchanan right now, they're a Division One base team with two wins, and they've got Clovis North tonight and Clovis East next week. Those are the top two teams in the central section. Why do I bring all this up, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you have a piece of paper, because I've got some scenarios for you. Because so, what happens now? Central Valley Christian and Lamore are sitting in the top two spots in Division Two. The third spot right now is currently held by the Centennial Golden Hawks. So tonight, the winner of this game most likely will be the 12 seed in the Division I playoffs, barring an upset next week. Now here are some scenarios where a few things can change. The Rams go five and five, which means they win tonight and they win next Thursday in the regular season finale at Stockdale. They're likely to go D1 if they beat Centennial tonight. But there is a scenario where Centennial, even with their loss to the Rams tonight, possibly could go Division I. And that's by Frontier beating Liberty tonight, which is a good possibility. Because Cole O'Brien, Trey Fulton, and DeGraffenried are all out tonight. That's our starting quarterback, starting wide receiver slash safety, and a do-everything guy in the return game, in offense, and at def defensive back, and DeGraffenried. So you got three major starters out for Liberty. If Frontier can upset the Liberty Patriots and hand them their first league loss since 2016, that would move the Titans up probably to the three spot from where they are currently at number eight. Now, if Centennial is able to come off this game and next week upset the Titans, they likely could jump the Garces Rams in the rankings and still even, moving. Even with a, even even with with a, a Garces loss. victory tonight. Because your strength, the strength of schedule That's for right. Centennial will only go up the next two games between this game and the Frontier game. And that Frontier game will matter more in common opponent and will bolster them up and probably jump us in the seedings. So this is a game where you win a win with pride, coach. You're a head coach. Now put your 157 win head coaching hat back on for a second, coach. You're a head coach like Paul Gola is. You're sitting at three and five and you realize that losing tonight is probably your best option for going division two playoffs. But you're a head football coach. Where is your mindset, Coach Finucchi? Well, your mindset is to win. You know, uh, a lot right. of these players might be playing their last game on this field. And, uh, and um, you want them to go out with that good taste in their mouth. You're absolutely right. And so, as a coach, you almost have to try to put all of those different scenarios out of your head. Fortunately, when I was coaching, they didn't have those scenarios. No, you did not. So you were I did Division not have to worry one, about it. You Division One. If you're Absolutely. Division Two, you're Division Two. If you're Absolutely. Division Three, so on and so forth. But that's not the world that we live in right now. So it is likely right now that the Rams are going to play Division One playoffs for the third year in a row with a victory tonight. A loss tonight would likely move them down to Division Two. So it's one of those situations. So the Rams are on the field tonight. The Golden Hawks are on the field tonight. Golden Hawks coming in tonight. 
They are 5-3 and three overall, 1-1 one and one in league. Let's run through their schedule. They uh, opened up the season with a 35-13 over a very good Redwood team. Then they were blank 25-0 to Newberry Park. They went on and beat Independence 42-21, defeated Ridgeview 37 to nothing. Then they took a loss to a very good singer team, currently ranked fifth in the central section, 21 to seven. They defeated Stockdale 31 to seven, Highland a 24-7 win. And then last week in a bloodbath, and I say bloodbath because there were a lot of injuries on both sides of the ball, including Jackson Santiago, the starting wide receiver, who is heading to Boston College next year, number nine on the field right now. But he looks good to go. That was a 30 to seven loss. The Rams coming in three and five tonight. We've talked about it before. They took those first three losses, Clovis, Paraclete, Moore Park, all close games. The last two coming by one possession, including that Moore Park game, which is a thriller in double overtime. They defeated Thousand Oaks 31-12. Here's the funny thing about it. Thousand Oaks beat Moore Park last week. Did they really? They really did. Wow. And then Menachee, we had that game on the road in Strathmore, 47-13. Losses to Liberty and Frontier, 41-13 and 38-15. And then defeated Bakersfield Christian last week, 28-21. Just a thrilling game. Rams got off to a 21-0 lead. Uh, Luke Taylor had the pick six at the D line. Cage Williams had an interception. Ricky Johnson might have had the best interception out of all. Just ripped it right out of the receiver's hands. Uh, actually, a beautiful play. Cage Williams had a uh, punt return for a touchdown. And Austin Hernandez had an 11-yard touchdown run. But the Eagles made it, made it interesting. They tied the game up. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. And then Guter Cola, our starting quarterback, just a sophomore, found freshman Bryce Hansen for a 57-yard touchdown pass. He leaped up in the air right in front of the Bakersfield Christian bench, shook off a defender, and went to the house. And the Rams victorious 28-21. So tonight, a huge matchup between these two teams. Two very good quarterbacks, senior Adam Kopis at Centennial and sophomore Guter Cola. We thank our... Sports Marketing Club President Cooper Carter for breaking it down for us tonight. When you look at completions, Gola has the edge on Copas, 87 to 80. Attempts, Gola, 169 to 121. He's thrown for 1,407 yards to 1,233 for Copas. Copas does have a better passing percentage, and we'll get in the rest of them in just a second. The passing average per play it goes to Gola. He has more touchdowns, 13 to eight. And Copas has the edge, three to six on interception. The QBR, Copas is a 111.3 QBR to a 90.5 for Gola. So you got two quarterbacks ready to sling the ball tonight. Two running backs ready to go for both teams between Lozano for Centennial and then Austin Hernandez leading the way, the three horsemen between Ricky Johnson, Logan Slayton, and along course, with Hernandez. And R.J. Green has gotten time in there as well throughout the year. we got about <laughs> six minutes left. Keys to the game tonight, Coach. Well, you know, we've said this all year, Trevor. We have to tackle well. We have to keep their receivers in front of us. When they complete the ball, we have to make the play. And then we have to be able to be balanced. We have to be able to run the ball. And if we can run the ball, it's going to open up our passing game. You know, injury-wise, we're in pretty good shape, but we are missing two pretty valuable kids tonight. We're, we're missing um, uh, the Boyd boy, um, Cooper, Cooper Boyd, yeah, and we're you, missing Michael Smith. Yeah, Michael and, uh, Smith out again for absolutely. concussion protocol. Cooper Boyd's dealing with a back injury, so missing both of them. Uh, it'll be Bryce Hansen. will fill a lot of the role there. Uh, at DB and wide receiver tonight, much like he did last week with the second touchdown catch of his young high school career. And on the line, it's Johnny Lester who's really taken over a great spot there at the left tackle position on the opposite side of Gina Lefevre playing right tackle. Um, and then, of course, you know, we, uh, we, we can't make penalties on big t at big times in the game. You know, if we're second and four, we don't want to be second and nine if we jump off sides or something along those lines. Uh, we just have to do those. And I'd like to see us score first, because I think if we score first, I think we can get on them. And it's late in the season for both teams. And like you say, we had a very emotional game last week. They had a very physical game last week. So, you know, it, it balances out. And we will do our best tonight. 
to keep you updated on the big game in town that is Frontier Liberty, obviously. A lot of implications there. Liberty hasn't lost 31 times. In fact, we might as well talk about it. The only coach to beat Brian Nixon since Nixon's been at Liberty over the last 10 years, Paul Gola. That's exactly right. It's 31 and two. That's exactly Two right. losses to Paul Gola. Pretty incredible. Like to welcome Travis Pluggy to the broadcast. He's sitting in Orlando tonight watching us. <laughs> Always appreciate you, Travis. We are going to take a quick break for Prayer National Anthem. We'll be back in just a few moments. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We'd like to take this time to thank our title sponsor, SCOE, Southern California Orthopedic Institution, for their continued support as our title sponsor this season. I'd also like to thank our other sponsors, our friend Sean McNally, our friend George Clearu over at Clearu Tires, and Jane Quinto, Ortho Arts, as well as the Mission Bank. Thank you all so much. Tonight's captains for Centennial, number nine, that is Jackson Santiago, number 44, Julian Vasir, number 88, Connor Workington. That is the cousin of Presley Workington, sir. And number 12, Adam Copas, the starting quarterback. Your captains for the Rams tonight from left to right on your screen. Number 55, Gino Lefevre. Number 6, Cage Williams. Number 5, Austin Hernandez. And number 10, Lawrence Wallace. Nice to see Lawrence getting his first shot at captain tonight. So we are just moments away from the kickoff tonight, Coach. It's palpable tonight. I mean, you got two teams. Do we want to go D1? Do we want to go D2? But we, you know what we w both want to do? Win a football game. We want to win a football game. That's yep. right. That's right. So that's like the thing. We you can look at all these playoff yep. applications. You know, everybody wants to talk about whether or not Centennial is elected to receive, has won the toss and elected to receive. That's um, quite rare. 
when you think about it, Coach. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. They, but they, they must have confidence in their game. So absolutely. here we go. The Centennial Golden Hawks, Adam Copas, Jackson Santiago, Angel Lo Lozano at running back. Let's see what they got. Let's see what the Rams defense. Rams defense had three takeaways in the first half against BCHS. How quickly can the Rams get out, stop the Centennial offense, and get going? Well, they'll certainly have their chance to, to, to do that early. Starting off on defense, you know, they have to set – you know, that's um, – the tone is usually set on defense, and uh, uh, they'll have every opportunity. Garst will have every opportunity to do just that. Sal Ochoa walking by, the man, the myth, the legend, the one that does just about everything on campus for us. <laughs> and he's got a great head of hair, doesn't he? He, he absolutely does. And, you know, you talk about uh, the MVP of our campus is Sal Ochoa. And uh, here's the thing about it. Longest tenured employee at Garst. Absolutely. Current, current longest tenured employee. Absolutely. Does such a fantastic job doing maintenance on campus right, along with Darren Burns. Up, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk less about what we love and more about what you love. And that's high school football and the Garces Rams ready to kick off. Jules Drazinga ready to kick this one off, the sophomore. And we got 48 minutes of football in front of us. Stand up if you're at home, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be a pooch kick right to about the 20-yard line, that's where it'll be picked up. Number 11, Carson Eldridge, also a decent decent baseball player for Centennial, Carson Eldridge is. And Good. they'll start right around their 30-yard line, the Golden Hawks will. Good coverage by our uh, by our kickoff team and um, um, fairly good position for us to start off in on defense. Especially on a pooch kick, Coach. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. All right, so here we go. The Veteran quarterback Adam Copas in the shotgun formation with his top running back, Angel Lozano. Twins to the bottom half of your screen. Here we go. First play, drops back, fires, completes very quickly. Number eight, Hoban Ho. Fumble, and, fumbled, and I think we And the recovered. Rams have recovered the ball. That is Logan Slate and Johnny on the spot, and that's exactly what the Rams need to do. We talked about in pregame, Coach. Can they get takeaways like they did last week? First play of the game. Absolutely. Now take advantage of this. So, like we've talked about before, it's like uh, it's like um, getting the first half kickoff and the second half kickoff both. Great way to start off for the defense. Can the Rams offense get it going? First and ten at their the Centennial 39. Here we go. Gola hands off to Hernandez, and he's quickly wrapped up, maybe a yard on that run. Something that the Rams weren't re really able to do much last week, and that's run the ball up the middle. Those holes were just plugged up right away. We'll see no gain there on that play, so they'll make it second and 10 from the 39. So the first play goes for not for the Rams. Again, wow, another great, great job by the defense. I think Ricky Johnson was there to strip it. Logan Slate was able to pick it up. Gola looks, fires quickly. That ball is batted down. Incomplete. Connor Workington, the Boise State commit with the, gets his big mitts on that one. He was able to block that down. He leads Centennial with eight sacks this season. Big, tall, lanky kid. You can see is all the intangibles at the next level and going to the greatest university in known known <laughs> universe. I'm not biased at all, I promise. Third and 10 from the 39 for the Rams. Gola with a bunch formation. Cage Williams jumps off the line just a sec. And there you get, it looked like Warkington and one other lineman jumped. So that'll be a free five yards. Fortunate for us because I think if we would have snapped the ball, I think we would have had too many men in the backfield. I think we had five. So. It looked like Nate Wallace was up on the line of scrimmage it? Okay. to make it seven. So I think we were good to go okay. there. Same formation that the Rams are doing here. Now there you the go. 34, now you're right. Five. Yeah, so w Wallace is up, but Cage came back up. Fires, looks. Is that a completed pass? Yep, they're calling that a completed pass. That'll be a first down. Completes that to the freshman. That goes to Bryce Hansen. And a great, a great ball there by 
a great ball, a great throw there by Gunter because uh, he had traffic around him and he and he fit it right in there. Six yards on that down to the uh, 28 yard line, first and ten for the Rams. Nice quick pitch for Gola, and here's Hernandez trying to break through that first level. Gets about three yards up to the 24 yard line. We'll call that right at the 25 is where they spot it. So a little shorter than what we thought. Second and seven, there'll be a three yard run there for Austin. I'll make it second and seven from the 25. 10 29 left here. And in the first quarter, we are scoreless. If you missed it, if you're just now tuning in on the first play of scrimmage, a nice completion for Centennial that was stripped and recovered by Logan Slayton. The Rams were able to take over in Golden Hawks territory. Empty backfield for Gola now. And quickly, Hernandez takes it on a sweep. Nice block there by Logan Slayton, but unable to get anywhere. Nice crack block there by Slayton there, but Austin unable to get any any clearance. Was that, or was that Nate Wallace there on the sweep? Well, I'll tell you who I think it was. Um, and it was interesting, he was in the game in the slot position was uh, number 25, RJ Green. All right, so a yard there, make it third and six from the 24. It will be four down territory for the Rams. So Gola fires, looks for a receiver. Looked like he was intended for Froelich, but that was caught in the backfield. And that was Jack that picked it up, but again, very uh, maybe two yards up to the 22 yard line. So I'll make it fourth and four from the 22, and we're not kicking from here, folks. We're going for it. Hernandez in the backfield. You got basically quads to the bottom half of your screen when you consider that Auburn back is a wide receiver in this formation. Empty to the top half. Angola calls a timeout. Doesn't like what he's looking at. So with 8.49 left here in the first quarter, we are scoreless. We're going to take a quick break. All right, we're back. 8.49 left here in the first quarter. GMSN and the Garza Athletic YouTube channel. Trevor Horn here along with the legendary John Finucchi. Fourth and four for the Rams at the Golden Hawk 22. We're scoreless. Bunch formation. Gola looks. Fires. Oh, fires right over the hands of Bryce Hansen. Incomplete. And that will turn the ball over to the Golden Hawks. Well, we didn't have a chance to take advantage of the turnover, but... We do have them in good position as far as our defense is yep. concerned. We get a stop here, either maybe force a turnover, but force a punt, and we're going to be right back in good shape again on offense. Yep. Yeah, a couple solid kickers, just not really the strength there to be able to kick a 37-yarder at this point. So it's good to go for it there. He was wide open, just a little over the top. So here are the Golden Hawks go, 8.45 left here in the first quarter, Copas. Hands it off to Lozano. He looks up the middle and gets maybe uh, two yards on that play up to the 24. We'll call it the 25, three yards for him. Second and seven now from the 25. No huddle. Hurry up offense. Yep. Keep him going. Deep roster. A lot of guys go one way. A few guys go both ways for Centennial. Cope is looking back at the coaching staff. Figured out. Drops back, looks, fires for Lozano, and he's got Ricky Johnson there to bat it down. That pass will fall incomplete. Very good coverage by Ricky out here. Uh, again, another one of those sophomores. Um, he knew his assignment. That seemed to be dotting our, uh, our, our uh, roster here. 
Um, when you look at Gunter Gola, you look at Ricky, Mike Smith when he's healthy. Obviously, he's out tonight. Cooper Boyd. Cooper Boyd when he's healthy. We've yeah. got a lot of Brock Kleitz down there, Jackson Fleming. Both of, our, both of our kickers. Both of our kickers, Jules and yeah. Sammy, yeah. Uh -huh. Plenty of sophomores, still got two more years left. And a reminder, next week, the regular season finale at Stockdale on Thursday night. And then we will wait till Saturday afternoon to find the playoffs, and the playoffs will start that next Friday. That's when the fun begins, Coach. That looks like it a, is an exciting yeah. time because it's a little cooler in the evenings. In a Legal formation. <laughs> False start against Centennial. That'll push them back third and 12 now from their own 20. So Centennial not doing themselves any favors here on their second drive of the game. Like I said, senior night. We celebrated our football seniors before the game. At halftime, we've got seven cheerleader seniors we're going to celebrate and seven band members that are seniors that we're going to celebrate tonight at halftime and this home finale for the Rams. Can you believe it? Copas fires deep. He's got a receiver. That's Santiago. He's in coverage. Are they going to call out it a bounds. catch? Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Incomplete. What an effort. Great coverage there by Cage Williams. Santiago showing why he's an ACC commit. But that's an incompletion. Make a fourth and 12. And the G-Hawks are going to have to punt it away. Every time they call his name, it causes me to shudder because when I was coaching against his oh, dad, his we couldn't tackle him. No. <laughs> Nobody could tackle Hernan. No. Still can't tackle Hernan now. <laughs> well, we'll get the ball in good field position. Austin Hernandez and Nate Wallace both back deep right around the 35-yard line. Deep, deep. They have a – and that ball is pooched. That's going to fall nowhere near him, and it's going to get a Rams bounce right at the 39-yard line. So that's going to be great field position for Garces. Again, starting their second drive in Centennial territory, Coach. We were giving a lot of confidence to that punter sitting back <laughs> at the 35. We certainly were giving him the respect that uh, hopefully to Respect. <laughs> There's the word I was looking for. All right, Coach, here we go. So the Rams on their second drive. It's 7.24 left here in the first Let's quarter, them, Rams, and we are still scoreless. Rams, first and 10. I'm going to do my best to keep you guys at bay with the other games <laughs> around playoff impl implications. Sorry. Gola hands off to Logan Slayton. He cuts through, gets about four yards. Uh, yep, we're going to get up to 35, so a four-yard run for Logan. Make it second and six. Every time that young man carries the ball, you can describe it as four hard yards because yep. he's definitely a yard-to-yard -yard runner. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Second play of the game, Bryson Tablet, 90-yard run. Frontier takes a 7-0 lead over, over Liberty. Wow. All right, second and six from the 35-yard line. Slayton in the backfield with Gola. Gola hands off to Slayton, cuts around. Gets maybe a yard up to 34 where he's corralled. So that'll make it third and five from the 34. So the Rams again, third and manageable. Coach, 6.18 left. Neither team has scored tonight. It might be a defensive battle here until one of the offenses finally wakes up. Correct. It looked like Centennial had it with that pass to Santiago, but he stepped out of bounds. Goal that looks, fires, falls incomplete into a slew of receivers in deep. I believe that was intended for Jack Froelich. And, uh, but it looked like Froelich was blocking at that time, too. It sure, it sure did. You know, Jack's been a... I won't say a wonderful surprise because we all we knew he was good, but boy, has he really had a heck of a year. Yeah, he's done a great job. One of the top top Thank receiver you. this year for Gola, along with Ian Harrison. And again, back next year. Yep, just a junior. Absolutely. You got Austin Hernandez coming out split with Ricky Johnson in the backfield with Gola, Cage Williams at top half of your 
screen. Gola looks, fires, looking for Froelich. Nowhere to be found, incomplete. So that'll be another turnover on downs for the Rams, and they'll give the ball right back to Centennial. So two turnovers on down to start the game for the Rams offensively, but no harm, no foul since well, Centennial hasn't been able to score on their two drives either. And Trevor, I think you hit it right on the nose. Until the offense gets going, yep. the defense has to keep us right where, where, where we are right now. You know what the difference between a 42-7 win and a 7 nothing win is? Just the points on the scoreboard. Absolutely. Absolutely. A win is a win is a win, right? Absolutely. Yep. All right, so here we go. Centennial with their third drive of the evening, 556 left here in the first quarter. Still scoreless. Copas hands off to Lozano. He breaks through that first line, gets a first down, and almost a midfield 16, 17-yard carry there for Lozano. Nice tackle by um, Ricky Johnson. So I'll take Centennial up to, uh, that's a 16 yard run. I apologize, they're right at the 50 yard line, right at midfield. So the first first down of the game is a 16 yard run by Angel Lozano. Copas again hands it off. This time he's corralled after about a three yard carry to the 47. Nick Gonzalez. Johnny on the spot there for the Rams. Front six has done a really good job there, but you can't allow those 16-yard runs. Yeah, absolutely. And give them any momentum. So second and seven from the 47, 48-yard line after a two-yard carry for Lozano. Lozano looks pressured, or excuse me, Copas takes it himself. Trying to get out of bounds and does right around the down marker there. So Copas. I think we're going to have third and short. Yep, showing some wheels, but they're going to be short. Third and about my intelligence level, so uh, very small. <laughs> Obviously, I think here we're looking at two down territory for them. Maybe not. Maybe they would punt if they didn't get it. But All right, third and one from the Rams 41-yard line. Centennial. Driving for the first time tonight. You see big Connor Workington in there at tight end now. Almost like an H-back position. Man, he is a mammoth human being, isn't he, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, and I won't Copas. Uh, He's going to run for the ball, Coach. I don't mean to cut you ooh. off. Ooh, a great catch there by Carson Eldridge for the first down. L went up and was able to get higher than Bryce Hansen, which doesn't happen a lot. Sorry, Coach, I cut you well, off. Well, I'm just saying, when you look at Warkington, you think, okay, he looks a little slight, but you know that when they get, when he gets to where he's going and they put him it's on Boise that. Boise State uh, University. Boise State, and they put him on that, uh, on their, uh, on their uh, weight program. proper diet and weight program, he's going to be a big young yep. man. Two for, tw two for four for 20 yards is Copas now as he hands it off to Lozano. He cuts through that first line, finally brought down by Johnny Lester. About the 20 yard line. Tackle made by number 54. Jonathan Lester. Still waiting to see if they're going to place it at the 21. So six yard carry, make it second and four. Workington going to Boise State. That's a heck of a school, isn't it, it's Coach? A, it's the greatest university in the known universe. <laughs> <laughs> Not having and where did you go to school, Coach? Boy, it's the greatest <laughs> university in the known universe. <laughs> Not having a great year. Loss on a Hail Mary. Colorado State, we yeah. won't talk about it. <laughs> While we were beating up on the uh, BCHS Eagles. So I was happy and sad all at the same time. <laughs> all right. Sorry, second and four now. Copas looks, fires, completed. Complete. And that's number just eight. number eight, Hoban Hogue. Hoban Hogue knocked out of bounds by number two, Nate Wallace. Uh, that's going to make it third and one after a three-yard reception there still haven't seen John well we've seen Santiago but he hasn't been able to do much third and one quickly that looks like the center got off before everybody else did are they going to call it though nope didn't it look like the center got off before everybody else did? it certainly did um but obviously it's it's the newest fad you've seen in, in football and that is just get behind and push him as far as you can 
big down here. Big down for our defense. No gain on that play, so we'll make it fourth and one at the 18-yard line. 2.34 left here in the first quarter. Once again, thanks to SCOE Southern Ortho Southern California Orthopedic Defense. Institution for their title sponsor this year. Defense. 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 Copas in a pistol formation with Lozano. Looks back to his coaches, waiting for the snap. Lozano moved too early. Boy, it looked like he, he, he left moved early way to me. too early, coach. And Copas is going to run it in. He's finally going to get stopped there by Nate Wallace. But they missed the false start there on Lozano because he got a head start there. And he wasn't going backward or sideways. He was going forward. So that was motion. Yep. So there we go. That'll make it first and goal for after a 15 yard run for Copas. And it'll be first and goal at the three yard line. Great play there by Copas to be able to realize that he had an open running lane and he took it. Down on the sideline, I see. Um, As Lozano looks, yeah. leaps, and I think he stopped just short. That's Nick Gonzalez and Ricky Johnson on the stop. Down on the sideline, I see Doc Hamilton. His uh, his Stanford Cardinal got a huge win last week. And my daddy's Stanford Cardinal yeah. too, uh -huh. Coach. If you went to bed when it was 29-0, oh, no. you missed it last <laughs> Friday. They came back and beat the Buffs. It was a great win. Talked to Zach Bucky afterwards. It was colorful. <laughs> he was excited. All right, Lozano with the ball again. Is he in? Yes. He is in, and that's a one-yard run. Touchdown, Geehawks. So a one-yard run there for Angel Lozano. It's an early 6-0 lead for Centennial with 108 left here in the first quarter. So Centennial's course, offense able to drive, made yeah. a nice drive. They started at the 34-yard line. No penalties. They were just able to march on down, find some big plays, and keep it going. You know, I, I'd like to say hi this evening to to our good friend George Clareau. I think George is a uh, is um, extra point is no good. No, extra point, no good. So All right, I think no it, good. 6:08 like, left. Yeah. Uh, six nothing. Excuse me. 108 left here in the first quarter. So Centennial able to get on the board first. I'd like to say hello to George. I think I know George tonight is getting ready for the opening of duck season tomorrow tomorrow morning. So, but I know he's watching right now, and I know he can continue to support the Rams. Makai Duluth with a rushing touchdown for Liberty, and they tie it up in the first quarter, seven-seven, with the Titans. North High has a seven-nothing lead over East. Coach, don't we have another big game? Who does Shafter play? Does Shafter? Shafter and Kennedy are playing Shafter this Shafter and evening. Kennedy. They're in Delano tonight. On the east side. <laughs> Mario Mion does a great job there for the Thunderbirds. Obviously, Gerald Perucci does a fantastic job for the Generals. Longtime area head coach at East High BCHS. Now it is an alma mater, Shafter. As the Golden Hawks will kick off for the first time this evening. This one goes deep, and this one's going to be picked up by Cage Williams right around the three-yard line. He cuts around, looks for a seam, finds it right around the 30. He's still going. Nope, he's brought down. That's Nick Gonzalez pushing the pile. So a nice return there by Cage Williams, and we'll see the Rams' offense come out for the third time this evening. Can they get something going? Important series for us. We have to... Uh, establish ourselves on offense, be get, maybe get a couple first, you know, definitely get a couple of first downs, um, um, start to start to get things flowing and um, and um, establish ourselves offensively because we've established ourselves defensively. Centennial had a nice drive, but we've been playing well defensively. So the Rams will start at their own 30-yard line, first and 10 with one minute exactly left here, trailing Centennial six to nothing. Austin Hernandez back in the backfield with Gola. You got quads at the bottom half of your screen again. Empty to the top. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Illegal formation against the Rams. That'll knock him back. Delay of game. Oh, delay of game. Sorry. Coming out of a, t coming out of a kick. That's a tough one to see. Five yards in the previous spot. Repeat. I'll drop him back down. to the 25-yard line. You got 35 seconds, and you know what you're going to get going in. It's tough to see a delay a game there, Coach. Absolutely, absolutely. And first and 15, you know, it, it, 
It's tough to overcome. Handoff right nice up the run. middle, and there goes Austin Hernandez. First good burst tonight for him out of the backfield. And that gets up to the 31-yard line. So, sorry, 36-yard line, so 11 yards on that carry. Um, and very manageable second and four now. Much more manageable yeah. second and four. So great burst there. Something we've seen a lot out of Austin this year. Shotgun formation again for Gola Hernandez in the backfield. Yeah, trips to the bottom half. Bryce Hansen to the top all alone. Gola looks, fires, finds Froelich. He's looking for a crease there, wrapped up very nicely right around the 39-yard line after about two yards. Second catch tonight for Jack Froelich. Third completion for Gola this evening to the 39-yard line. They make a third and one. One three, one three for us. Is that the little and ladies and gentlemen, that concludes first quarter. Goldhawks lead six to zero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the first quarter. Centennial six, Garces zero. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful Sam Tobias Field here at the campus of Carson Memorial High School. Trevor Horn along with John Finucchi here on senior night for your Rams. And I think it's kind of cool right now, Jay, if you could pan down to our cheerleaders real quick. Our senior cheerleaders all wearing sashes around them. So all cool, little, cool little spot there for the senior cheerleaders to wear their sashes all night long. Appreciate it, that's awesome. So we got third and one now from the 39 yard line for the Rams. Looking for their first, first down of the night. Gola with Hernandez. And Hernandez has got the ball burst through, Great gets the first down. It's about two more yards up to the 38, sorry, the 42 three yard carry, but you only needed one. So there's the first, first down of the night for the Rams, ladies and gentlemen. And we're in a, are we in a hurry up? No, we're huddling them. That's the first time we've heard first down and first play of the second oh, quarter, so that's uh, a good sound for the Rams. Mickey doing a great job tonight at PA for us. Gola in shotgun formation with Hernandez again. Gola looks, drops, fakes, sacked. Ooh, just wrapped up by big 77 Carter Fahey, and that'll drop him back. Gola was looking for that beautiful hitch and go, but unable to do it as the ball goes back to the 38, a four-yard loss. If you're going to run, a, if you're going to run a, a pattern like that again, you have to have to buy a little more time for him. Yeah. Give it time to develop. Yep. So it'll be second and 14 from their own 38-yard line. Rams offense trying to do all they can to get some momentum going here in league play. It's been tough. You've had Liberty and Frontier and now Centennial to start off. Tough league to play in, Coach. Absolutely. Hernandez with the ball up the middle. Gets back to maybe the 39-yard line. Back to the original line of scrimmage on that. Three-yard carry. He's got 20 yards on five carries. three yards on the play. Big third down here. Yep. Got to be careful. Don't want to turn the ball over, but want but to do something imaginative enough to get a first down. So third and 11 from their own 41. Tough when you have your top receiver and Mike Smith, one of your top receivers and Mike Smith Absolutely. out. But Gola's gonna drop back. He's looking for some pressure. He fires, he's looking. He's got Cage Williams and is Cage able to stay in bounds? He's not, so it's gonna be short. It's gonna be short though, nice but, 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 but manage it, but doable. Will they leave the offense on the field? Yep. Yep. So that ball to the 49, 10-yard pass play there. Going out four of eight for 21 yards. And the Rams are fourth and one. Rams fans, only one more yard. 
from the, at the, the Centennial 49. Can they get the first down here? Fourth time they've gone for it, and this time it's Logan Slayton. And I think he pushed the pile just enough, Coach. You got the line judge sitting right around the first if down If we marker. get this mark right here, I think we have a first down. Yeah, line judge is looking at it. Where he's standing is a first down. What are they calling? At this point, if, if you're going to call it, you got to bring the chains out. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's too close to not bring the chains out. And it looks like they're not going to bring the chains out. They're going to call him short. So no yards there. Boy, it sure looked to me like we it got really the push. It really did. It looked like he got a good push. But they're not calling it. Wait. Hold on one second. Flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. Let's see what it is. And penalty against the Rams. Flag on the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Rams. That's going to push them all the way back. So that will negate that play. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and Gibson and Tenniel. Forever. And that will be Centennial. Great yep. field position. So that's a very unfortunate situation there for the Rams to give up 15 free yards when down 6 nothing left in the offense, unable to get anything going in the first three drives. So here are the Golden Hawks at the Rams 36-yard line. Copas in a pistol, hands it off to Lozano, and he is met right away, and that's Logan Slayton. Wow. Didn't let him get anything, so that's a loss of a, maybe a half a yard there. Boy, more and more, that's that that's the name that you hear more and more and more, yep. and that's Logan Slayton on defense. Yep. Wow, they're going to give him the spot right at the back of the original line of scrimmage, so no gain on that play. But Logan just busted right through and wrapped him up as quickly as possible. Watch Jackson Santiago here, number nine on the bottom half of your screen. He's got Cage Williams on him. Cage is giving him a little bit of cushion here. Second and, second and 10 from the 36. Copas looks, fires. He gets hit and again goes right through the hands of Santiago. He had a good look. He's a big kid. But again, out of bounds to make it third and 10 from the 36-yard line. Good pressure there by R.J. Green on the backside for the Rams to force Copas to throw it maybe a little bit earlier than he wanted to. I think he wanted to let Jackson kind of find a little wiggle room, wasn't able to do it. So good pressure by the front six, and the secretary did their job on that play. Again, combination type of route between number nine and number 11. Takes a little longer to develop. Our defense could put the pressure on the quarterback to have to throw it early. Shafter and Kennedy tied 7-7 in the first quarter up in Delano. Copas with the ball, rolls out, looks, fires. He's got Santiago up there, one-on-one -on -one with Cage Williams. Santiago wow. uses his height, does a little dance, and he's going to get a penalty there, rightfully so. But a 36-yard touchdown pass. But there is a personal foul in the backfield as well, or is it just that one personal foul in the touchdown holds? Let's see. We're going to bring this touchdown back, ladies and gentlemen. Great catch by Jack Jackson Santiago. Might go for not. But you definitely can't dance in the end zone no, like you that in high school football. This isn't prime time just yet. Still waiting for the call. And it looks like it's going to go against Centennial on both of them. But was there a, was there a personal foul before? Holding on Holding them. against the offense. And so that will negate, but there's also a personal foul. You have to, don't you have to take that into account? I, well, you you would think it'd go 10-15, uh, you know, 10 yards for the holding and 15 for the Because they both happen. Yeah. Now this was a dead ball foul, so maybe you you can you you have to you have to accept one decline one. Okay, that will negate that touchdown and be a 10-yard penalty. Right. The original okay. line of scrimmage, so that'll move the Golden Hawks back to their own uh, 40, 45, 40, 46. 46, yep. yep. So it'll make it third and 20 now. Obviously, with this offense with Jackson Santiago, you got plays in your playbook at third and 20 with a guy like that. Copa stops. You know, that, that was a great catch by uh, Santiago, but it was also very good coverage by Cage. Um, 
just yeah, just two yep. just two good plays. All right, time out. Centennial just let you know that Makai Duluth with another rushing touchdown, and Liberty takes a 14-7 lead over Falcons. Here at Sam Tobias Field, Centennial has the ball third and 20 from the 47-yard line. They lead 6-0, 8.58 left here in the second quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, we're back here at GMSN on the Garza Athletic YouTube channel. Trevor Horn along with John Finucchi. Golden Hawks. Golden Hawks, 6-0 lead, and they got the ball at the Rams 47. Third and 20, though. Adam Kopas drops back, looks, fires. He's got a receiver. He's got Bryce Hansen and Bryce. Oh, they're going to call Bryce Hansen on a P.I. And I don't know if there was enough separation there for a P.I. I think the ball just hit Bryce in the back of the head. I don't think he hit the receiver there, Coach. Yeah, I don't think he did either. You know, I, I, I can, can't say. But that is not an automatic first down because it was third and 20, so that's going to make it so third and So it's going to be five. third and five. Yeah, yeah. that should make it third and five. As, as much as pass interference has changed since I coached, I don't know what pass interference is anymore, but I thought Bryce yeah. looked back to the ball or made an attempt to look back to the ball. Yeah, Gola right now is not happy. And DeJon Jernig, uh It did, yep. Every coach on the Garza sideline right now is saying exactly what I said. It hit Bryce in the back of the head, and we just got a personal foul on the on the Rams sideline. Yep, that's unfortunate. Sideline, personal, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the sideline. Which, and that's a, it's a tough deal. I know we're upset, but at the same time, let's make them earn that first down. I think we just gave them that first down. Yep. So that would have made it third and five. Now it's going to make it first and ten. Angola is beside himself right now, trying to figure out, first off, how do you make a pass interference call on a ball that hits the defender's helmet? We'll go back and look at that one later. Not on this broadcast, but I'll do it from home from my computer. And I might throw something. All right, so that'll take the ball all the way down to the 17-yard line and make a first and ten. It's a tough pill to swallow there, Coach. You know, absolutely. You know, I, uh, we have to keep our cool in situations like that because we had third down. They had to get six yards, and uh, we put them in a better position. But we can still make up for it by, by rising up on defense right here. Centennial tries to go for the hard count. Rams don't jump. Copas with the ball, hands off to Lozano right up the middle. Great Ooh. job. Great tackle. Yep, great tackle there by Ian Harrison. Absolutely. Comes up from the safety position and is able to hit him after just a two-yard gain. So some kind of safety blitz, some kind of yep. defensive blitz because he came out, of, came out of the backfield to make that tackle. Yep. So I make it second and eight from the 15. A great stop there by the senior Ian Harrison. 8.27 and counting here left here in the first half. You know, as, 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 as well as Coach Gold is known really all over the state, for, uh, for the pistol offense that he ran so successfully at Bakersfield High. It was always his defense that stood out. Very aggressive, very active defense. And that was a great play by Ian Harrison. All right, so Copas with the ball now. Second and set, eight from the 15. He looks, fires, fires Lozano. And he's wrapped up there by Cage Williams right around the 10-yard uh, line after about a five-yard carry. First catch tonight for 21, Lozano down to the nine-yard line, so six yards on that play. Third and two from the nine. So Centennial looking to punch this one in again. 
and trying to take a two score lead. 7.23 left here in the second quarter. Come on, Rams fans, show them you're there for them. Copas hands off to Lozano. Lozano wrapped up right around, right around the line of scrimmage. Logan Slayton again and Ricky Johnson there. And Nick Gonzalez there to wrap him up. And that's actually going to go for no gain. So that'll be fourth and two from the Big nine. fourth down. Big fourth down right here. Lozano, one of the top rushers in Kern County this year. Just 32 yards on 10 carries tonight. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and two from the nine-yard line. The offense is staying out there. Carson Eldridge rushing off the field. Can that big old line push the box or can the Rams defense push it in and get a stop here? High snap, Lozano. Got a stop. And he Excellent. stopped, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Froelich and Johnny Lester on the spot on the two-yard loss there, and the defense does their job. Turnover on downs, and the defense does their job. It keeps the Rams within striking distance. They're still down only six with 6.26 left here in the first half. A great job by the Garces defense there, Coach. That is a huge play in this game right now, huge play. So here comes the Rams offense, and hopefully they can take that momentum from defense and translate it Absolutely. In, in, into the first scoring drive of the game tonight. Gola hands it off to Hernandez. He gets past the 15 up to about the 17-yard line, and that's where he'll stop after about a six-yard carry. So I'll make it second and four. Let's string together some first downs here and uh, see if we can get down there and, and, and either tie or take a lead in, into the half. Hernandez stays on the backfield with Gola, who's going to stay in the shotgun formation. Hernandez with the ball again, wrapped up. Tries to get a few extra yards, maybe gets up to the 20, gets about three yards, so I'll make a third and one. Three yards on the play. 29 yards now on seven carries for Hernandez, leading the way for the Rams offensively. Gola, like I said, four of eight for 21 yards. Completing four of those passes with three different receivers. But here we go, a big third and a long one here. If you look at the down and distance marker and the down marker. Golo with the ball, looks. He's got Cage Williams. First down, Great wrapped job. up right around the 32-yard line after a 12-yard reception. And that's a Rams first down and the longest play of the night for Very the Very simple throw and catch. Yep, very much so. They obviously, Centennial is re respecting Cage's speed and athletic ability. They play off him a little bit. It's a and, nice throw and catch. And we're going to go 11 yards on that play, Coach. Gola hands it off to Hernandez. Tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Gets a yard. For the Rams are playing conservative. Trying to find those holes. Yep. And hopefully trying to bring the defense in and look for something over the top. And I think we'll see that if not this down, I think maybe next. Gola takes a snap, keeps it himself, but he is wrapped up very, very quickly by Drew Petty, number 80. And Boy, you gotta give you gotta give a lot of credit to uh to um to Centennial there because they took away the pitch and then they were able to rally to to get to uh, Gunter, so yep. that's a great play by them. Yep, they took that outside leverage out, Absolutely. and then they were able to collapse in Absolutely. and stop Gola from going anywhere. Big play here, yep. big play. Trips to the bottom half of your screen. Froelich, Wallace, Wallace, and Williams, excuse me. Hernandez in the backfield with Gola. Gola looks, fires, and is that a catch? They're gonna call it. And if, well, and if they're marking it where they're marking again. it's the first down. So again, great job. Gola to Williams. We'll just have to wait and see where they're going to mark the ball. The umpire is waiting. 
We have a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Oh, chop block. block. Oh, that's going to yeah. bring that back. Yeah, you don't see those very often anymore. So that's going to negate that likely first down play. So that'll take them all the way back 10 yards to the 22-yard line. Third and a good third, 20, I think. Yeah, huh? third and 19. Huh? Not far off, Coach. So we got 325 left here in the first half. This game is flying by. It's 6-0 Centennial lead. Rams now, they need a big play here. Or they're going to have to punt it away on their fourth drive after turnovers and downs. First three. And even after that unsportsmanlike conduct, the defense doing a great job mm -hmm. holding the Golden Hawks. Reverse a pass. Reverse, Jack Frolick looking for Guter Gola. How do you like that? But only gets up to about the 30-yard line, so it's going to fall well short. Jack Frolick. Tackle made by number 22, Luke Camps. So Frolick, and that's the first catch of Guter Gola's high school career. Goes for eight yards. And I love and I love what they're doing there. Um, I think I saw that play maybe three times last Saturday in college games. So as a coach, you look at it, you say, "Could we make that work?" Yeah. But if all short, it'll be fourth and eleven Absolutely. from the thirty, and Cage Absolutely. Williams is going to be out there to have to punt. Back deep is Roland Myers, number seven, staying around the forty-five yard line for Centennial. Two forty-two left in counting. The Rams are probably just going to let this one tick all the way down. Maybe call a timeout. Cage is always nope. a threat back there to, to, to run if, if the opportunity presents itself. You are correct, but he does get it off, and that's a beautiful punt. Takes Myers all the way back to the 35. He's finally corralled by Nick Gonzalez. They're going to call Nick on a face mask, though, because he got his hand right absolutely. up there in the face. So absolutely. You saw that you know, clear as day. We saw it clear as day. Unfortunately, it's one of those plays that – I've, I've said before, as a coach, it's tough to get mad at, 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 the, at the guy who gets the face mask because all he's doing is reaching to grab something, yeah. to tackle something. Big, big series here for the Rams' defense, knowing that Garces will get the ball to start the third quarter. And they're going to start off in our territory with the 15-yard penalty. Yep. Well, that's going to march them up to about the uh, – 39-yard line, I presume. 38. 38. Yes. Oh, I was off by one. You said third and 20. It was actually third and 19. I said the third and 19. We're actually both 20. just a little off. Just a little. I mean, <laughs> you know what? That's just our lives in general. <laughs> just a little off. All right. Here go the G-Hawks up. 6 nothing. First and 10 at the Garces. 38. Copas with the ball. Looks. And he's dropped. Picked up by Nick Gonzalez. He drops the ball. But Johnny on the spot there. I think is Bryce Hansen, and the Rams get the ball Absolutely. right back. Absolutely. Great job. Luke Taylor again. That guy just loves getting his hands in there and knocking the balls out. So, wow. And Bryce Hansen is the one that's able to finally pick it up. I was very concerned that they were going to call that an incomplete pass. It was definitely a fumble. Oh, no. He was running Absolutely. for the ball. So, the Rams got the ball now in Centennial Territory, first and 10 at the 49. And you talk about a huge series well, for you know, the defense. Now it's a huge series I, for the offense. I was just about to if you're say able to score here and get it to a point where you get it ticked down yeah. to under a minute. I was just about yeah. to say that our defense had to rise up. Now we our defense did that. We get the ball back, and now we're looking to score. So that's and, two turnovers for the Garces defense absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. And Gola with Ricky Johnson, he hands it off to Johnson. He cuts around to the 45. Oh, he is getting wrapped up, and he just keeps on going. Gets about eight, maybe nine yards on that play. And we're still looking at two timeouts left, so um, we can do anything yep. we want here. We can throw it. We can run it. Eight-yard gain on the play. So a nice eight-yard run there, and he just Absolutely. pulled that defender and you know, with him. And we're, looking, and we're looking at one of those situations where – if we can go down and score, then we get then actually then we get the ball back to start. The yeah, so this is a huge momentum Absolutely. shift for hopefully for the Rams here. Johnson stays in the backfield with Gola. Gola looks quickly, fires out, finds Frolick again. He's past the 40 to the 35, gets a block there, finally pushed out of bounds. Right behind the block from Cage with Williams. So again, move the change. Yep, the Gola to Frolick connection is a first down, and the Rams going. The clock stops thankfully. 
Ball down to the 33 after an eight yard pass play there. Third catch for Froelich tonight, 14 yards. Gola has now completed his last four passes. Now it's 40 yards passing tonight. 125 on the clock. Ball set. Attention, parents and family of senior band and cheerleader members, please head to the south end of the field at this time. Thank you. Gola, empty backfield quickly. He's got the hitch and go. He's got Cage Williams out there. He's covered, and that ball's going to fall incomplete, double covered. Nice coverage there by Juan Cerna. So that'll first incompletion in five attempts for Gola. This is probably the wrong thing to say here, Trevor, but I saw about as much contact between Cerna and our receiver as I did down at the other end with um, Bryce Hansen on the, on the pass interference that was called down there. No lies detected, Coach. <laughs> All right, so it'll be second and 10 with 119 left here in the first half. Centennial leads six to nothing. Gola with the ball. Hernandez in the backfield, trips to the top half. Nate Wallace in motion, but he hands it off to Hernandez, and he is just wrapped up right away. First one there is Ronan Sullivan. And that's going to be a quick timeout for the Rams. So now you've got third and long again here, Coach. But, uh, I know you've got third and long, but it's four down. You've got two, two downs to do it. So if you can get. So four eight, yards. Uh, eight to twelve yards on the on the first on third down yep. makes a very manageable fourth down. So you got third and fourteen after that four yard loss. I didn't see that being a four yard. I don't know where that down and distance marker is. Only back to the thirty six. So make it third and thirteen. One eleven on the clock. Here, end of the first half. And remember, at halftime, we're going to honor our cheerleader seniors, seven of them, and seven band seniors tonight during a 20 minute halftime. So, if you guys want to watch that for about 10 minutes and you got 10 minutes, go get a snack before we start this. Are you the MC on that? I uh, always, sir. <laughs> and well My deserved. wife loves it. And well when I deserved. go home on Saturday, I don't have a voice. <laughs> She just tells me to go outside and run after Hudson. <laughs> and Hudson's running. Yep. He's like, he's like, in that way, he's like Forrest Gump. He's yep. just running. running. <laughs> All right, third and 13 from the 36-yard line for the Rams. It's Option a pitch pass. Out and a pass from Ricky Johnson. We've seen this before. He looks for Nate Wallace. Incomplete. Incomplete. How in the wow. world did that ball fall wow. incomplete? Wow, that's the second time we've seen Ricky Johnson wow. do that. Both of them look good. That one falls incomplete. Was that to, to Nathaniel? It was to Nate Wallace. Wow, what a great idea there again. Correction, incomplete pass. And it looked like Nate had his hands on it. And somehow that ball went from the 37, from the 36 to the 37. <laughs> How did that ball go from the 36 to the 37? <laughs> That is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. The ball was marked at the 36 on the previous play. Now, it is now third, fourth and 14 from the 37 somehow, coach. <laughs> All right, Gola rolls out. He's got protection. Oh, but he is just wrapped up by Jaden Hernandez. 57 seconds left here. Wow. So that's another sack. I mean, that's a, that was nasty. Wow. That was nasty. <sighs> So Centennial will take the ball over with 57 seconds Well, I'll tell you left. what, I'll tell you what, Trevor, and I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is a very a important lot. 57 seconds. It really is. I don't know a lot, but I do know that. Yeah. Wow, that was a – This is this is very, very important. That was a, a great look by the front six for Centennial. So they'll get the ball back at the 45-yard right. line at their own 45. So they got 55 yards in if front of them. If we can go in only seconds. down six to nothing – then we can drive the ball to start the second half to, to, to possibly tie this um, game up or go ahead. Yeah, 100% correct. Copas with the ball now. And, again, it looked like a false start, but Copas is going to fall. And that's going to be picked off by Cage Williams. You saw that a mile away. Yes. So that's a third turnover 
forced by the Rams defense, and Cage is doing all he can to get away from Jackson Santiago. And you're talking about two seniors just battling. But that is a pick. And, Coach, we talk about it. The Rams defense just coming to play tonight. Well, you know, and Trevor, you've heard me say this more than once. You tell your defensive backs, keep the man in front of you. Yep. Um, because that, guy, that quarterback threw a nice pass, but it was long, and Cage was there to – just sitting to, there to waiting. To be the receiver, absolutely. It's like he was sitting on the porch waiting for a lemonade, and all of a sudden it just falls in his hands. So what do you do now? You got 42 seconds left, and I think, I think well, it says two to, timeouts. But. I think you try to see if you can get Hernandez to run the ball about 15, 20 yards. Yeah. Get, a, get a little bit of cushion out of We got Logan in there right now, though. <laughs> so it looks like we're probably just going to take this one in the half. <laughs> and something going on with Drew Petty. He's got to come out. And you got another... Another O lineman coming in. Not sure what that was. Austin Hernandez comes in, thinks twice about it, comes back out. <laughs> coach, coach, let me go. I'm a dog. All right, Slayton in the backfield with Gola. Quick handoff. Slayton up the middle. Maybe up to the 12, about five yards there. I can hear an echo, Diana. Now you have a penalty. Flag after the play. Ball is handed off. Logan Slayton. All right, Slayton with the ball there, and who called the timeout? It was a penalty. Unsportsmanlike on Centennial, so that's free 15 for the Rams. So now maybe you take a shot. Yeah, you're up to the 27 first and 10, uh -huh. and why not? Done it a few times now. Gunter Gola looking at his father going, Dad, coach, what are we doing? <laughs> so that ball is up to the 27-yard line, first and 10. 32 seconds left here in the first half. The Rams have two timeouts, as do the Golden Hawks. The Golden Hawks timeouts at this point don't matter. What does matter is the first and 10 and the two timeouts for the Rams. And we got a flag for what? Flag, one play. What is that call, Coach? I've never seen that. I do not know. Illegal substitution. Oh, ah, there we go. Legal substitution. Five yards, the previous spot. So, I, and the 32, uh, first I've never five. understood that, uh, illegal substitution. If you have 11 guys on the field when the ball is snapped, I don't know what, where there's illegal substitution. All right, now first and five at the 32, so the Rams able to get <laughs> 25 yards for nothing. That's right. Hanson, yep. flags, oh, two holes. Probably hold. got holding. Yep, a couple holding calls there, so that'll negate a first down play. Pass is completed to number 21, Bryce Hanson. Girls water polo doing the 50-50 rattle. I see Marie Zaninovich, arm length. Go find Nate James. Number eight, Oven Hogan. Go find Nate and James. He's got the long arms. Give me 20 bucks Holding worth, Murray. Versus. Holding against the Rams. So I think what you do right here, you know, um, I think maybe you uh, go in down by six. So I'm getting my arm measured now by a goalie who had two shutouts this week for the girls' water polo team, senior Marie Zaninovich. Congratulations to you, Marie. And those are my tickets. Is there a winner in there? Thanks, kid. All right, so then I'll make it uh, – First and 15 from the 21 for the Rams. There you go. And that'll be the half, ladies and gentlemen. Hernandez gets about uh, two yards on that play, and that's going to take us to the half. Centennial leads 6 nothing over your Garces Rams. We're going to take a break, but we're going to be able to watch and listen the senior ceremony tonight for senior cheer and band. We're going to have a 20-minute halftime. We'll be back. Centennial 6, Garces nothing here on GMSN. We'll be back.
year on cheer tonight. She's joined by her mom, Trisha, Ty, and her brother, David. Her favorite moment in Garza's cheer is halftime performances and dances throughout the years. To her parents, thank you for guiding me into doing the right things and helping me become the person I am today. To her coaches, thank you for helping me improve my skills and sportsmanship. To her teammates, thank you guys for making it more fun and having people to confide in. Thank you, Ivana. Next up, Ryan Kariva. Ryan has been on cheer, dance team, student council, Sergeant in Arms, Link Crew, Garza Shepherd, Interact Club, Hispanic Latino Culture Club, Helping Hands Club, Chess Club, Gold Gloves Club, Business Class, and Garza's Final. Yes, she loves Garza's Memorial. Tonight she's joined by her mother, Christine Hornbuckle, her dad, Paul, and brother, Alex, and grandparents, Pam and Greg. Her favorite moment at Garza is building lifelong friendships that will last a lifetime, as well as cheering at football games, having fun at rallies, and dancing the night away at dances. To her parents, thank you, Mom, Dad, Mimi, and Papa for all the sacrifice you made for me and the endless support and love to help me reach my goals and building me to the person I am today. I love you guys. Special thank you to Gigi for your unconditional love and words of guidance. To her coaches, dear Georgia, Skyler, and Lily, thank you so much for creating the best team ever. I appreciate everything you guys do in Georgia. Thank you for being such a huge impact on me and incredible inspiration to our team. You absolutely deserve the world. I love you. And to her teammates, I am insanely proud of the individuals you become and hope you all know how special each and every one of you are. Remember to please listen to Georgia always. I love you. Thank you, Ryan. Next up, Noelle McCrary. Noelle is a four-year member of the cheer team, three years in FFA, three years Helping Hands Club, three years of Bass Club. Tonight, she's joined by her parents, Josette and Jim, and sister, Juliet. Her favorite moment in Garza is every time cheer team gets to perform at rallies at halftime. To her parents, thank you so much for blessing me with the opportunity to receive a Catholic education. I cannot be more grateful, and I love you. To her coaches, thank you for believing me and always pushing me to be the best. We cannot be a team without you. And to her teammates, you got, girls never fail to put a smile on my face. I'm incredibly thankful for the friendships I formed through Garza's cheer, and I love you so much. Thank you, Noelle. Next up, Delaney Pollock. Delaney is a four-year member of the Garza cheer team, three years on girls' soccer team. Tonight, she's joined by her mother, Celise, and her dad, Jeff. Her favorite moment, Garza, is when her friends cheer on her from the stands. To her parents, thank you, Dad, for pushing me to do better, and thank you, Mom, for always giving me support. To her coaches, thank you for always holding me accountable and pushing me to be the best self. And to her teammates, thank you for always giving me the best encouragement I needed to keep going. Thank you, Delaney. Next up, Lily and Tracy. Lily is a two-year member of Garza's Cheer, two years in FFA. Tonight, she's joined by her parents, Todd and Annette. Her favorite moment at Garza is all the dress-up days and dances. To her parents, she says, thank you so much for making go to Garza's and always supporting and loving me in everything that I do. And to her teammates, thank you for all the laughs and fun we've had together. I'll miss you all. Thank you, Lily. Next up, Vanessa Hernandez. Vanessa, along with her cheer, is part of Link Crew, Garza Shepherds, ASB, Hispanic Club, and Interact Club. Tonight, she's joined by her mom, Lucinda. Vanessa's favorite moment at Garza's has to be the joy she felt after transferring to Garza's. To her mom, thank you for always being my biggest cheerleader and my favorite role model. To her coaches, thank you for being patient and guiding us. And to her teammates, I wish nothing but the best for you all in the future. Thank you, Vanessa. And last but not least, Lexi Verdeen. Lexi is a member of the Hispanic Culture Club, the Bass Club, the Gold Gold Club, Garza Shepherds, while also playing basketball, running track, and cross country in high school, and ends their first year on cheer. Tonight, she's joined by her parents, Amelia and Nestor. Her favorite moment at Garza is the dance and show at school spirit of games, along with food and palooza. She says she is lucky to be a Ram. To her parents, mom and dad, thank you so much for all that you do for me. You guys continue to be my number one inspiration, whether it's for my future career or understand the values of friendship and family. I love you so much. To her coaches, thank you so much for the efforts and time you put into this team. Your support is greatly appreciated. To her teammates, I'm grateful to have such an amazing group of girls. Your encouragement and loving words mean everything. I'll miss you girls so much. Keep cheering your hearts out. Thank you, Lexi. And another big, huge round of applause for our seven Garces Memorial cheerleaders. Next up, our seven band seniors. First up, we saw him at the beginning of the game. Now we see him again, Kevin Cobnon. His future goal is to go to college, buy mom a house, and live life to the fullest. 
and he would like to thank his mom, his friends, and everyone that supported and believed in him. Thank you, Kevin. Next up, Erin Castillo. Her future goal is to graduate with a bachelor's degree and be successful. She would like to thank her family and friends. We'd like to thank you, Erin. <laughs> Our next band senior, Gwen Goombach. Her future goal is to graduate college and live an easy and successful life. Tonight, she'd like to thank her family and friends. Thank you, Gwen. Our next senior, we celebrate her on the volleyball court tonight. Tonight we celebrate her as a band member, Jessica Hernandez. Jessica's future goal is to go to UCI and receive a major in psychology, physiology. And she would like to thank her family and friends and Mr. Ortega. Thank you, Jessica. Next senior, Brooke Hunter. Brooke says her future goal is to go to college, get a well-paying and fun job. And she would like to thank her parents, friends, and teachers. Thank you, Brooke. Our next senior, Troy Lake. Troy says his future goals, go to college, become an English professor, and write a book. He'd like to thank his family, his English teachers, and his dog, Porchy. Thank you, Troy. And last but not least tonight, Juno Lee. Juno says he, his future goal is to live a peaceful life, and he'd like to thank his parents, friends, and other people who helped him get to this school at Garces Memorial. Thank you, Juno. And again, another big round of applause for our football seniors, our cheerleading seniors, and our band seniors, and their parents. Thank you for your love and support.
I love this song. I love this song. So evidently John Finucchi loves shipping. I'm shipping out to Boston by the Flog and Mollies. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? But we are back for the second half, ladies and gentlemen, here on GMSN, the Garza Athletics YouTube channel, Trevor Horn, along with the one, the only, the legendary, don't let him call himself old, John Finucchi. The Rams trail Centennial 6-0. Really, I mean, tonight, I think the key to the game is the Garza Memorial defense. Again, forcing three turnovers in the first half for the second week in a row and limiting Centennial's big play ability. Absolutely. Uh, there's no question about that. They've uh, taken away a, a lot of the throwing and a lot of the running and, um, and have done a wonderful job. Now, it's, now we get the ball to start the second half. So it's a great opportunity to get the offense going. A couple scores for you into the first half. Kennedy actually leads Shafter 14-7. to Wow. That would be an upset. Undefeated Shafter ranked in the top 20 in the central section on the road in a huge league battle. East High and North are tied at the half, 14-14, and Liberty has a 14-13 lead over Frontier right now. So everybody kind of in a defensive battle. The Rams already on the field ready to go, and the Jayhawks have come out, and their cheerleaders are getting into it. They're excited about it, but the Rams will get the ball to start the second half thanks to the defense. Like I said, that is Recovered two fumbles, and Cage Williams had that interception late in the first half. Gunter Gola is 7 of 11 for 40 yards tonight. Jack Froelich, 1 of 1 for 8 yards. And then Ricky Johnson had that one attempt that fell incomplete when he looked for Nate Wallace deep in the end zone. Austin Hernandez leads the way for the Rams. 10 carries tonight for 28 yards for Centennial. Senior Adam Kopis. Just four of eight for 29 yards and an interception. And the one big thing missing tonight is a catch by Jackson Santiago, the Boston College commit. He had that long, what looked like a catch there in the first drive, but he went out of bounds and he had another look here right around the 30 yard line in front of us that went out of bounds. And Adrian Lozano, he's got 11 carries for 30 yards. Uh, he has scored the lone touchdown and a one yard run that has given Centennial the six nothing lead. So those are your stats of the game, and the Rams, well, they're going to need to come out here and make a good impression here and really kind of put together a drive and try to get into the end zone for the first time tonight. Like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, this game has a lot of playoff implications for both teams. The Rams sitting in the 12th spot right now in D1, and Centennial, if you will, is the first out. But that first out into D2 also means the third seed because you have Central Valley Christian out of Visalia and Lamore both ranked higher than both Garza Centennial in the overall central section rankings on calpreps.com. However, both of those teams are division three bases, which means neither one of them can move up to division one like Garza Centennial who are D2 bases. So Garza is sitting in that driver's seat for a D1 spot in the 12th seat, which likely see the five seat, which may be Clovis West, maybe Central, maybe Singer, maybe Frontier or Liberty. We don't know. So much can happen between tonight and next week before the playoffs are announced next Saturday. Did you get like, all that? Absolutely. And like you said earlier, uh, what's on these young people's minds Winning is tonight. the next 24 minutes. 100% correct. So here we go. GMSN here on the Garza Athletic YouTube channel brought to you by SCOE Southern. California Orthopedic Institution as that ball goes deep into the end zone for a touchback and the Rams will start at their own 20 yard line. We'd also like to thank our other other sponsors tonight. Our good friend Sean McNally, Clarou Tires and our good buddy George Clarou, Mission Bank and Gian Quinto Ortho Arts. Thank you all so much for your support this season for GMSN. This is our fifth and final broadcast of the season. If we're able to get a home game in Division Two, still unlikely we're going to be able to broadcast that game, but we will have highlights for you. You can always follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Garces Athletics for constant updates. But here are the Rams, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Hernandez in the backfield. Gola, Gola pitches out to Hernandez. Hernandez gets stopped right around the line of scrimmage, but he takes a pile with him about three yards, and that's where he'll get stopped right around the 23-yard line. Obviously something that... Um, it's obvious something that 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 um, 
Centennial has worked on is taking away our option game a little bit. They're doing a pretty good job forcing um, um, Gunter to pitch the ball and then rallying to the pitch. I think what you're seeing tonight is two really, really good front sixes on defense. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Second and seven from the 23-yard line, 11-27 and counting here in the third quarter. Like we said, the Rams are trailing 6-0. Gola with Hernandez in the backfield. Gola looks, fires. He's looking for Cage Williams, but that is tipped right at the line of scrimmage. One of those big paws got up there and batted that one down. So we make it third and seven from the 23. Cage Williams was wide open on that, too. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we had a couple of tips. Um, um, Centennial is very long and very, uh, long, very athletic on their defensive those line. Those three down linemen absolutely. in front. They're all sitting right around 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". Those are big boys. All right, here we go. Third and seven from the 23. 11, 12 left here in the third. Gola fires. Looking for Hernandez in the backfield. That'll be a run. He's going to cut back, and, oh, he gets brought down. However, there are penalty flags everywhere. We're going to see what that is. We might have a hold on him. Um, well, let's go ahead and see. On the backside hold when he's trying to cut back. It's about three different flags on the field, all for the same penalty, most likely. And, of course, that's not a passing stat because uh, I think he threw that about, about three yards backward on that. He did. So penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. So that'll be a, a run for Hernandez, and that's going to go all the way back to the 13-yard line, so a 10-yard loss, actually. Boy, that's not the way we want to start the, the second half. But in order to... Um, to um, to correct that, we have to play real well on defense yep. our first time. Williams gets the ball off. A little bit of a pooch that's going to land right around the 41. It's going to stay right there. Oh, and a nice little Garces bounce, an extra yard or two to the 42, and that's where Centennial will start their first drive of the second half. Garces, go Big Green. All right, here we go. First and 10 from the 42. Thank you, Kim Harper, for the little help. I appreciate you. You want to say hi to Kim Harper there, Coach? How you doing there, Kim? You yeah. know, Kim, Kim was my uh, – I taught her, and then she was my aide when she was when she was a senior and, um, and, and then a very good friend when she worked here. Yep. About a yard there down to the 41-yard line. One-yard run there for Lozano. He's got 31 carries on 12. 31 yards on 12 carries are. So we're doing a pretty good job against him. Um, like Problem I said, is they're doing a good job against Austin Hernandez absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Both defenses absolutely. have really come to play tonight. Yep. Shotgun formation again for Copas. Puts Eldridge in motion. He goes all the way to the top half. Copas drops back, rolls to the right, looks, fires, deep, triple covered. And that's got to be offensive pass. That's got to be offensive pass interference because he had a hand on Nate Wallace Absolutely. that whole time. Absolutely. But it's probably going to go against Nate, sadly. Pass intended for number eight, Oban Hoagie. Actually, the way that they're talking right now, the time that they're taking, he's probably reminding him it is offensive pass that interference. That is definitely offensive yeah. pass interference. Yep, offensive Absolutely. pass interference, Coach. Goodness Absolutely. gracious. You rarely see that play called, but it got no. called tonight. But Nate, hey. you know, Nate had definitely become the receiver in that situation. Yep. How about this? Another one of your former coworkers, Becky Meek, saying hi from Texas. Oh, well, hello, Becky Meek and, and a, her entire and, and, family. And Becky actually says hi, Kim, as well. Absolutely. She goes, hi, Kim. Like 12 <laughs> exclamation points and hi, Trev and Fanuki with only two exclamation points. So thanks, Becky. Glad to see Aiden back on the field for Sac State. They played really well last weekend. They've got ES they're gonna be on ESPN tomorrow night. You know I'm gonna be watching that game tomorrow Absolutely. night. Aiden and Davis May both playing for the Hornets. Love it. So second and twenty-four for the Golden Hawks from their own forty-four. So that's a big personal foul there. 
against Golden Hawks. And that was right. I mean, he had a hand on Nate's back the whole time and pushed him down. Absolutely. No, no, no doubt about that. And you could tell when they, were, when they were talking about it that he was like, it was offensive, just so you guys know. Great job. And there you go, the Rams defense, R.J. Green. And they turned right the ball there. over. It's and they turned the ball over. A fourth turnover for the Garces Rams defense tonight. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the best field position the Rams are going to have tonight. I think we saw Johnny Lester getting up out of that pile. Oh, my goodness. Wow, what a great push there by the Rams defense. And that is Johnny Lester, one of our seniors. Johnny on the spot. <laughs> and the Rams get the ball inside at the Centennial 41. Momentum, momentum, momentum. The Rams need it more than anything right now. Can the offense get going now, Coach? Let's go. Well, we're great. we've got great field position. Let's take advantage. All right, Hernandez in the backfield with Gola. Gola hands it off to Hernandez. He gets past that first line of scrimmage. He's still going, brought down right around the 36-yard line after about five yards on that carry. Nice little run to start this drive, make it second and manageable at the 36-yard line after that five-yard carry. Yeah, I think without a question, we're in four-down territory, so oh, yeah. uh, um, you keep getting a little bit of yardage each time. We put ourselves in great position. All right, here the Rams go. Still scoreless, trailing 6 nothing, 9-10 and counting left here in the third quarter. Second and five from the Centennial 36-yard line. A bunch formation. See Nick Gonzalez in there. Froelich. Fires, finds Williams again. First down, eh, close to the line of scrimmage. Little chirping going on there. So, see we're gonna mark it and they're gonna call first down Garces. On the 30 yard line, I believe, well. 27 yard line, a nine yard pass play from Gola. He's up to 49 yards passing. Third catch tonight for Cage Williams. First and 10 at the 27 yard line. 8.36 left here in the third quarter. Rams driving after another, a fourth turnover for the defense tonight. Doing a great job. Gola fires, finds Hanson. Hanson catches it, moves out to the left. He's got coverage there right around the down and distance marker. But again, that freshman is—he doesn't play like a freshman, coach. No, absolutely not. And he's absolutely a great young man. Not. And that is—they're going to give him a first down, coach. So ten yards on that play. Garces, first down again. Down to the 17-yard line, exactly ten yards on that play. You know, not only do we see him on the on the on the varsity football field, we'll also see him on the varsity basketball field. Four-year starting point guard. You darn absolutely. too. Absolutely. All right, first and down in the red zone for the first time tonight are your Garces Rams trailing 6 nothing with eight minutes exactly on the clock. Hernandez in the backfield with Gola. Trips to the right. Hanson all by himself on the left half, the top half of your screen. Gola pitches out to Hernandez. Hernandez looks for a crease. Gets up to a, maybe the 14-yard line after a three-yard carry. Again, Connor Workington there on the tackle for the Jayhawks. Second and seven from the 14-yard line. And we talk about second down. I mean, really, it might as well be first down because they're going to go for four down territory absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely. 7.20 and counting left here in the first half. Hernandez still in the backfield. Williams getting a little, Cage Williams has just a little bit of cushion there. But they're going to hand it off, and they're going to call. Illegal formation. Yep. Dead ball, illegal oh, formation against well, the Rams. So yep. they'll push it back Ball's to the 19. Garces. False start. So it'll be second and 12 from the 19. We had talked about that earlier. You know, we don't want to put ourselves in that second and long situation. But when you're in four down territory, it's, well, it's not as bad. So it is halftime, 14-13, Liberty over Frontier. That game is going to be a good one. That game already is a good one. It's going to get that second half should be uh, a battle for first place. When Again, we talk about Liberty having not lost a league game since 2016 and Frontier coming in 8-0 against the 7-1 Patriots, both in the top 10 in the central section. 
But here we go back to the Rams, second and 12 from the 19-yard line. Gola looks, pumps, fires. He's got a receiver, but I think that's going to fall incomplete right around the one-yard line. Again, it was tipped. And, uh, almost a heck of a play by uh, by the receiver to, to, to pick that up off the turf. But unfortunately, they hit the ground, and uh, we're well, looking, looking at, at third and 12. Our largest offensive lineman is probably 6'1", and Gino Lefevre, and they're – Three down linemen are all, like we said already, 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". Absolutely. With long limbs, too. So if Gola's is going to get a fire off like that, he's got to be able to find a yes. little bit of crease and then find yep. a little bit of area where he can really get his arm out. So here we go, third and 12 from the 19. We are in four down territory, most likely. So Gola fires. He finds Froelich right around the 10-yard line. He's looking for a crease. He's on the outside. Touch him. Touch down, Garces. Guter Gola to Jack Froelich, 19 yards to the house, tied. Rams looking for the lead. PAT Penny with 6.26 left here in the third quarter. Great run, catch and run by Jack Froelich. Absolutely, yeah, and, and, and just a nice, nice, de nicely designed play. Well called, well run, and uh, was that Nate Wallace or Jack Froelich? That was Jack Froelich, that I believe. That was definitely Jack Froelich. Yeah, that was that was Jack Froelich on the catch there. Okay, they've called off the PAT. I think they'll kick it again. Offside on Centennial. Centennial, so they'll kick it again. Are they gonna kick it or are they gonna bring Offside, in the box. offense? I don't I don't understand it because they got the play off and kicked it, so Nope. It is gonna be Maybe they called it unobstructed to the kicker. I'm not sure. All right, so James Smith saying it's Nate Nate Wallace, but everybody up here is still saying Jack Froelich. We'll go back and look, but I'm going to give it to Jack. And that PAT is good. So the Rams take the lead for the first time tonight with 6.26 left in the third quarter. A great drive that started on the 41-yard thanks to a turnover, and the Rams take the lead for the first time, 7-6. Coach, you couldn't cut, grab the touchdown there any more opportunistic, especially when the defense doing what they're doing. Absolutely, there. absolutely. And, you know, and you hit it right on the nose. Uh, three turnovers, four turnovers, you know. Four. Uh, four turnovers. So what, seven in the last two weeks? Yeah. Wow. It's impressive stuff, man. Yep. And youthfulness, if you think about it. You know, I, you know we talk about senior night, but – he really, it's the underclassmen kind of doing it for the Rams tonight. Absolutely, you know, I, this um, this um, entire roster is 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 filled with underclassmen, talented, and we're but talking he, about a freshman, sophomores, and juniors. Yep. So. And here's a pooch kitsch that's going to go right around the 25-yard line. The Rams are going to control, to control Eldridge, and that's exactly what they do uh, right around the 37-yard line. That's where Centennial will start. And now you got a head full of steam because you've got the lead now, a one-point lead, thanks to that missed PAT in the first quarter. And now the Rams have the lead, and the defense playing so well tonight. So well. And we see our fearless leader, Noel Leon, our principal, down there on the sideline. Love seeing her coming to sporting events, really supporting athletics here at Carson Memorial. We're very appreciative of her. Absolutely. And what a great job she's doing this year. And, you know, she and, uh, and, and Mr. Hickey. Kent Hickey both yep. doing just a great job running our school, keeping our school running smoothly. Okay. So we do have a replay, and it looks like it was Nate Wallace on that catch. Nate Wallace on that catch. Well, then I apologize, Nate. I, 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 Nathaniel. I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was Jack Froelich. Great job by Nathaniel. Uh, one of the one of the twelve seniors who were honored this evening. Yep. And there was a short run for no gain there. By Lozano. So, flag on the play though. So the Rams leading. For the first time tonight. Seven to six, five forty-four left here. 
Snap and fraction, Centennial. Snap and fraction against the Jayhawks. Make it first and 15 now from their own 33-yard line. Well, yeah, so. if, you, if you think about it, Trevor, that's not the second, not not the first time we've you and I have questioned uh, the center on their team possibly um, having the procedure penalty on him. So Copas looks wrapped up. R.J. Green, Logan Slayton, and friends. Another sack for the defense, and that the Rams' defense has really just come to play tonight. Centennial, if you look at it, Coach, they've really had a tough time scoring against top-level defenses, whether it's Newberry Park, Liberty, or Frontier. And again tonight, let's not cut these boys short. The Rams' defense is doing their job tonight on an eight-yard loss there. And this is a great time in the season to be showing that kind of defensive prowess because uh, play Defense well. Defense wins championships, Absolutely. Coach. So third and 23 at their own 25. And wow. Lozano just met well, up in the, the oh, right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a half a yard there, but nothing. And that's going to force a punt. Another great stop there for the Rams. And that's going to force Centennial to punt for the first time tonight. Second time tonight. I apologize. That first one just died yes. right at midfield. There was no return on that first punt. So 420 left here in the third quarter. Your Rams lead 7-6 to six over the G-Hawks. That punt is going to get downed again, almost at the same line of scrimmage as the first one, <laughs> right around the 43 yard right line. Right around the 43 yard line. And there's nothing wrong with that, and the Rams will take over, leading by one now. After that 19 yard touchdown pass from Gutercola to Nathaniel Wallace. Apologize, Nate. Uh, we got old eyes. Well, you got, you got great eyes. I got old eyes. Uh, I've got old eyes, but uh, a great play by, by Nathaniel to score that touchdown. I mean, really, he caught it, and he just went. Yes. And he just found that crease, saw the block, and just kept going outside, stayed in bounds, got in the end zone, did his job. 43-yard line for the Rams. Gola keeps it. Nope, Ooh. pitches out. Oh, Ooh, that ball's on the ground. Play. But that ball's going to go out fortunate. of bounds. Very, We're very, very fortunate. Very, very fortunate. That, that's a loss and not... A turnover. The Rams have won the turnover battle tonight, four to nothing. I mean, do you count turnovers and down as turnovers? Technically, yeah, yeah you yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know. So they are still winning the battle, three to four. So that ball goes all the way back down to the thirty-six yard line. Dad's going to tell son right now. Um, live to fight another day. Tuck that ball away. Get tackled. Don't yep. try to make a pitch like that. All right, so second and 17 from the 36-yard line, 348 and counting. Um, not in counting. That ball went out of bounds, Trevor. Way to go. 348 left here in the third quarter. <laughs> Gola going for the hard count, and Black on the play. are they going to say they jumped? It didn't look like the Centennial jumped. But they're going to give the Rams five, five yards on the encroachment, make well. it third and 12 from the 41. Offside, Goldhawks, five yards down. Centennial's playing against two teams tonight, the Rams and themselves. <laughs> exactly. With all these penalties against Centennial tonight. So here we go again, 41. Quick pitch out to Hernandez. He looks for something, gets back maybe to the original line of scrimmage after getting maybe two yards after after contact there. The ball's up to the 43. They got third and 10. Big third down here. Yep, third and 10. Big third down. They're on 43 yard line. 258 and counting left here in the third quarter here on GMSN on the Garth Athletic YouTube channel. Trevor Horn along with John Finucchi, our title sponsor is Southern Ortho Southern California Orthopedic Institution. Thank you so much. As Gola drops back, 
He's looking. He's firing. He's got, got Cage. Cage Williams. Oh. Oh, and, and a wonderful defensive play defensive by number play seven. Defensive play by Roland Myers there. Absolutely. My goodness, incomplete. Because it looked like Cage was open. And, uh, so an incomplete pass there by Gola. But that was a good look, but a great defensive play by Roland Absolutely. Myers. And this is a... You know, and this is kind of that position on the field where if uh, if um, Cage, Cage sees it, Cage sees an opening. I think everybody knows now. Absolutely. You do it once, yes. and everybody kind of knows. Absolutely. We pulled it off against a thousand oaks. Yep. Cage is going to quickly punt that off, and that's a beautiful punt. That's going to push Myers all the way back and, and great quickly coverage. wrapped up by great Lawrence coverage. Wallace and his buddies are there to help out, including Luke Napier, and seven, R.J. Myers. Green, Nick Gonzalez. Kagan McCarthy there <laughs> on the tackle. Mama Shauna's happy. You can yell. It's okay, Mama. Great play there by Kagan. And the Rams are at the 22-yard line. Excuse me, Centennial's at the 22-yard line to start this drive. All right, 2.31 left here in the third quarter. The Rams lead Centennial 7-6. to six. Crucial game here, a lot of implications. Good defensive play. Yes. Ball falls incomplete. Coverage by number two, Nate Wallace. Second and 10 from the 22 yard line, 226 left here. Come on, fans, let's get the Ushaw going out here. Can the defense continue to stack up against the Golden Hawks tonight and keep them out of the end zone and give the offense another great field position? We'll see second and 10 here. Copas drops, rolls, fires. Bryce Hart, Bryce Hansen, great defensive play there by the freshman DB to knock that one down. Our defensive backfield has played a really, really good game tonight. You know, you I think almost called him Bryce Harper. Pardon me? I almost called him Bryce Harper. Now I want to look at the Philly score. Um, Keep going, Coach. J just a, you know, I mean, I mean, Santiago made that one great play that was called back, but we had him well covered. We have really played well in our defensive uh, back backfield this evening. I'm going to correct you, Coach, if you don't mind, and say I think the entire defense is. I agree with an you. An incredibly I great agree game with this you. evening. Third and ten at their own 22-yard line are the Golden Hawks. Copas with Lozano in the backfield with him. He drops Here back. Here comes pressure. Yep. He's got backside pressure. He fires. That ball is incomplete. Oh, no. Intended by. Oh, oh, no. Did you call pass interference? I believe they did. That was intended for Hoban Hogue. Yeah. That was a very quick flag. Wow. Might be a little flag heavy. You might want to wave that one off, guys. Do yourselves a favor. Absolutely they did wave nice it off. off. You know, sometimes I say things and nobody believes me. <laughs> sometimes I say things and people start to believe me just a little bit more. And that one should have gone waved off. He threw that one a little too quickly. A little flag happy. That's okay. Centennial probably not too happy about it. We're okay over here. So that's a third and out after three incompletions. Great defensive series by our entire defense. Yep. Great defensive series. So that will force Centennial to punt with 2.13 left during the third quarter. And Nate Wallace and Cage Williams back to receive. Big keys tonight for our defense. You know, we're, we're getting pressure on their quarterback. We're stopping their run, and we're playing well uh, when they throw the ball. So we're really putting pressure on them. We're doing a heck of a job on defense. Thanks, James Smith. I appreciate you saying that. He said great call and then wave off. <laughs> Punt is up. It's going to go, and Cage is going to pick it up right at the 47-yard line. 
wrapped up there, almost a horse collar, but it's the back of the jersey, so that's okay. It gets about eight yards on that punt return. And again, the Rams will start in Centennial Territory. Here on senior night, you're looking for those seniors to really start making plays. Nate Wallace made one. Cage Williams tried to make one there. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Rams with the ball. 201 left here in the third quarter. They've got the ball at the Centennial 46, and we're going to go. Gola now up to 78 yards passing compared to just 29 for Copas tonight. 29 yards passing for a guy that's averaged almost 200 yards a game. Absolutely. That's Ricky Johnson in the backfield. He gets about five yards finally. He, he, he gets hit and still gets a yard or two after it. That ball is up to the 42-yard line. Four Nick. yards there, second and six. Jared Boyd's going to walk by and not say hello. That's fine. Goodbye. I didn't want to interrupt you. You didn't like it when I talked to you earlier. Hi, Coach. How are you? Good. Hey, hey. at some point, can I get a uh, shout-out to all the paint dads tonight? Yeah, the paint dads did a great job. The field does look great tonight as Ricky Johnson takes the ball, wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage. Gets up to uh, maybe the 31, maybe gets about three yards on that play. Paint Dads, dude, great job. The Rams looks good. The G looks good. The end zone looks awesome. They spend great time and effort doing the field for us every home game. Appreciate them. So that ball is down to the 39. Make it third and three after that three-yard carry by Mr. Ricky Johnson. Gunter Gola, the third, talking to Gunter Gola, the second. That would be our head coach, Paul Cole. For those that don't know. Grandpa and grandma might be in the stands tonight. <laughs> so third and three from the 39, 42 seconds left here in the third quarter. Rams trying to extend this drive with the first down. And it looks like they got Workington moving. Nope, they're going to push the Rams back. Wow. Okay. So, oh, delay a game against the Rams. So they'll make it third and seven now. So that. Kind of changes the scheme here on this play just a bit. North High, North leads East, 21-14, 7:25 left in the third quarter. Third and eight from the 44. Gola fakes, fires, finds Austin Hernandez for the first down and a little bit more. A great, a great throw and catch. A great Very throw much catch. so. Great fake. Brought that defense in. Found a little crease. Ball goes down to the 32-yard line. 12 yards on that play. First down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of the third quarter. The Rams lead 7-6 to six on her driving here on GMSN on the Garcia Athletic YouTube channel. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, you better be looking at those, Cooper, because I got 20 bucks riding on this 50-50 raffle. Throw them away. I don't even get to hear my numbers. They said it's pink, and I got green. Thanks, Mar Oh, wait. To be continue. All right, so the Rams first and 10 at the Centennial 32. First play here of the fourth quarter. Gola hands it off to Johnson. Johnson spin moves, wrapped up to the 29 after about three yards on that carry. As a coach, what you'd like to do right here and as a team. It is pink. First three numbers. 
you would like to you would like to have your offensive line just kind of take over and you'd like to move the ball keep the clock the running pile. keep getting first downs get the ball in the end zone get a two score lead so the ball is at the 30 so that's actually just a two yard run there for Johnson so second and eight Gola looks fakes fires uh -oh. looking for Williams and that's picked off that's number 22 Luke Camps and that's the interception by the Golden Hawks and Centennial will take over deep in their own territory nice play there by Camps to go up and get it it's time for our defense to do what they've been doing all night yep push that's back. to rise up and get a stop So they'll start at their own eight yard line. Nice interception there. First true turnover for the Rams. Right. Obviously they had three turnover for downs in the first quarter, but that's the first turnover after forcing four on the defensive side of the ball. The Rams still lead seven to six here in the fourth quarter, 11-13 left. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Sean McNally, Clarou Tires, Mission Bank, and Gianquinto Art, Ortho Arts. We thank you so much. And our obviously our title sponsor, SCOE. Thank you guys so much. Lozano wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage by the feet, Ricky Johnson and Nick Gonzalez right there as well. The Rams just doing a great job defensively. Just a yard there for Lozano. He's only got 32 carries on four, 32 yards on, on 14 carries. Second and nine from the nine yard line. The Rams defense has just absolutely come to play. And you're looking at Johnny Lester, Luke Taylor, Ricky Johnson, RJ Green, Nick Gonzalez, Nate Wallace, Jack Froelich, Logan Slayton, Bryce Hansen, Cage Williams, Ian Harrison. Fantastic job tonight. Copas rolls. He's got pressure in the end zone. He's looking. And, and what I, are they going to call there? I think we're going to get, get a, a hold safety call. here. I think we're going to get a safety. I think they held us in the end zone. Okay. I yeah. don't know if that's a safety in college. I mean, in high school. It is a hold. He, the white hat is indicating a hold. Holding against. Penalty is declined. Oh, okay. They make it third. I, I, I guess I was wrong. It's not. I think holding in the pros or, and in college in the, in the end zone is a safety. And that's five straight incompletions for Copas now. Defense doing a great job, so they'll make it third and nine from the nine. So obviously Gola has a lot of a lot of respect and a lot of uh, you know he knows what his defense is going to do. I'm tired, guys. I'm so a lot of trust in these guys. A lot of trust. Thank you, coach. This is why you're a math teacher. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, false start against. The Golden Hawks, and that's about the 10th penalty against Centennial tonight. They're not doing themselves any favors. No, absolutely not, and I know. So smart job to uh, call off that holding yes. call because now it's third and 14 from the five, and you might just get a safety here just to get a safety unless they decide to just try to run it out. But if you try to run it out, then you're putting your punter in the back of the end absolutely. zone on fourth down. Absolutely. So Copas looks, fires. He's got a receiver Cut. deep. Who's going to go up and get it? Nobody. Falls incomplete. Cage Williams there Wonderful in coverage, coverage by Cage. against Jackson Wonderful Santiago. And still, let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. Jackson Santiago, averaging over 100 yards receiving this year, does not have a catch tonight. Oh. So fourth and 14, ladies and gentlemen, don't, don't look away. This might be a huge play here with Centennial's punter in the back of the end zone. If he doesn't recover this well, or if it goes over his head and it falls on the ground, it could be a safety, he could recover for a touchdown, you never know. Or if he's able to get it back, the Rams are gonna get great field position here. So however you want to look at it, this is a good, good time for the Rams defense, and he does get it off, and that's a Not great a punt kick. there. Not yeah. a bad punt. Right to the 37. Ooh, that's that to right there, that's going to be a there penalty. And oh, my gosh, ladies there and gentlemen, Nate Wallace is not getting up. Nate Wallace, Nate is, Nate Wallace is not getting up. Oh, God, thank God he moved. Oh, I'm sorry. That That is that is about as bad of a play as you can have right there in high school football. Thank goodness Nate Wallace is up and moving on his own power. That is – the game of football should not be played like that no. at any time whatsoever. No. No. 
goodness gracious, thank goodness Nate got up because he didn't move there for a second, for Coach. A, for a second, for a there, second there, he didn't right. move. And my heart dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness gracious, glad that Nate's okay. Oh, man. You hate to see it, Coach. Now he looks he, he, he looks good on the sideline right now. He's walking but with you Todd know they will check our, him out. Yeah. He's walking with Todd, our new trainer. Oh, and you know, thankfully we, got, we have three. Thank God we got Doc Hamilton there. right there. Yeah, thank you goodness. Oh. Sorry, I'm. And we're going over to look at the trainer right now. So I'm not okay with plays like that in high school. Boy, football. I'll tell you what, it, it, it is scary. Any time like that, it's scary. Just glad to see Nate up. Absolutely. Back to the field, ladies and gentlemen, though, the Rams are first and 10 at their own 25. Like we said, great field position, but that's not the way you want to get that ball. No, and there's a quick. We're going to have a first and five. Yep. Yep. Against. Yep. Encroachment. I, I mean, I, I don't know how many more penalties Centennial can have tonight by shooting themselves in the foot because that's all they're doing tonight. You can. Centennial fans will boo all they want. I mean, if you jump, you jump. All right, so here we go. First and five at the 20. 10 02 left. And we have another flag. We got another flag. And that's going to um, I think bring it right back to the, the 25. Back. Yep. So, hey, let's go back to first and 10. <laughs> that photo would be great, Coach, if it wasn't for that midsection right there. <laughs> that's better. There you Thank go. Thank you, Diana. For four years now, we've been doing these live streams, and Diana Rodriguez has been with us all the way. We go back to our B-Varsity days, and I appreciate Diana always being here for us. Thanks, friend. First and 10 at the 25. We said it before. Gola with the ball, looking for anything, trying That's to get ooh. back to the line of scrimmage. Probably just does. Ball kept by number three, Gunter Gola, brought down by number 17, Jaden Hernandez. All right. It looks like Nate Wallace is getting cleared. He's putting his helmet back on. He's getting back out. That is a great sign. Boy, that is a great sign because you were right. At first, he did not move at all. Yep. And, uh, So second and 10 from the 25. Gola looks, fires. He's got Bryce Hansen back there. Ball tipped right around the goal line by Denver Peoples, number 25. Hansen had a step. Yep. He had a step, but it was just underthrown by Gunter, just a tad, allowing Peebles to get his hand up and deflect yeah, that ball. If know, not, that's six. Yep. And they've made a couple of nice plays. You know, Gunter's been on target tonight. Both they've defenses just made some have come great to play plays. tonight. It's fun. Shafter now leads 21-14 over Kennedy. Tough, though, one of their top players taken to the hospital tonight for the Thunderbirds, so tough to hear about that. Seem to be some kind of so delay out there. Out. So we'll see what exactly it is. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, kind of just taking a good look. Nate Wall is still down there with the uh, medical staff that we have on the sideline. He had put his helmet back on, but now he's taking it back off. So we got third and 10 now, still at the 25 yard line for the Rams offense. Logan Slayton in the backfield. Gola quickly looks, fires. Intended for Williams. Williams went on a seam route, and it looked like Gola wanted him to do a 10-yard out, and they just didn't see it. So we're going to have fourth and 10 now from the 25. 9-11 left here to play in the fourth quarter. York Garces Rams still leading Centennial 7-6. Nate Wallace, who had that big touchdown there in the third quarter, still on the sideline being looked at. It actually looks like they're actually checking his chin right now. So he yes. probably got part of that hit probably – cut him up on the bottom half of his chin strap. And are we going to line up for? We are lining up for field goal. All right, a 32-yard field goal attempt by Sammy Gonzalez. Is it Sammy or is it Jules? Oh, it is Jules. Sorry, that is Jules Drazinga. Ball is up. Wow. Ball is up. And, and it's it good. Is good. My goodness, 42 
42-yard field goal by sophomore Jules Strazinga. And Gino Lefevre lifts him up. And that right there is a 10-yard, or a 10-6 lead now after a 42-yard longest field goal of the season for the Rams. And a very important field goal because it takes the, now field they goal. have to score. They have to score a touchdown. Absolutely. The field goal is taken out of the equation. Absolutely. So with 9.05 left here in the fourth quarter, Garces now leads 10-6 over Centennial. So you got 9.05 left here to play, and the Rams now have a crucial four-point lead. Jules Struzinga, the sophomore, with a huge and boot. Sam, those of you keeping track of other high school football games this evening, Frontier currently leads 19-14 over Liberty. Brady Durkin, quarter. second TD run for Frontier, and they retake the lead. The two-point conversion is no good. So Frontier has a third quarter lead, 19-14 over Liberty. So you talk about upsets. There's an upset there. Absolutely. And the man of the hour, Jules Strazinga, go with the pooch kick right around the 30. Nicely picked up there by and Eldridge. A great tackle. And a great tackle by Ricky Johnson at the 35-yard line. And that's where Centennial and this gauntlet of a Rams defense will hit the field. So Adam Kopis, he has thrown, since completing a six-yard pass, that swing pass to Lozano, it's thrown an interception and five consecutive incompletions. Wow. It's nothing against Adam Kopis, but that is all the credit to the Garces defense. To, to the Garces defense, to the front four, to the linebackers, to the defensive backs, to all of them. All right, so here we go. First and 10 at the 35, 8.59 left here to play in this one. Senior night, final home game of the regular season. And there is another incompletion. That one intended for Hope and Hope falls incomplete. Six, seven consecutive incompletions for the Centennial senior. And again, that's not against the Centennial. That's a credit to the Rams Absolutely. defense tonight. Absolutely. Because he has no time. No. He's taking one step and firing. Absolutely. He's not giving the receivers the time to get in their routes because Compared to what we saw so two weeks against, against Frontier, yeah, this is a totally different look. So, Copas again, he's got pressure on the back side. He's got to throw that thing up, and Nate Wallace is in there back playing, which is such a great thing to see. And he was looking for that interception, but it falls short. And so another incompletion makes it third and 10, and again, great pressure from the front six for the Rams tonight, Coach. Absolutely, and I don't want to jinx anybody, and I hope I'm not doing this, but I'll tell you who has done a wonderful job tonight. Very quietly is Cage Williams. Mm -hmm. He has taken Jackson Santiago up to this point out of the game. If you don't remember, last year Cage Williams went up over Jackson Santiago for an interception last year at Centennial. Absolutely. These two have history. There we go, third and 10 from the 35. 849 left to play, 10 to six Rams over Centennial. Copas high snap, corrals it, looks. He's got pressure from RJ Green. He's looking, he's firing. He finds absolutely nothing but grass. That's going to be, do we have and another? And we're going to, yep. And you hate to see this. Oh, yep. he's up, good. Okay. <coughs> is that going to be, is that personal foul against the, the Rams? Play? Yeah, I think they're going to call him for uh, roughing the passer. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it looks like Luke Taylor got called on that. Probably got him as a one step out of bounds, and that's what it's going to be. So it's going to be a personal foul against the Rams. That's going to take him up to the 46, and it's going to be an automatic first down for Centennial. So we talk about Centennial kind of stubbing their toes with penalties tonight. The Rams do that on a third down. Takes it all the way up to the 50-yard line. Sorry, they were at the 35, so it's 50 yards, 15-yard variety, and it takes it right to midfield. So 840 and counting, fresh new downs for the Jayhawks. Copas with Lozano, pistol formation, quickly fires, looks, and quickly corralled by Nate Wallace. Who has played a really good game. Tonight. Hogue again with that one. Nate Number eight. Really, yep. Nathaniel had really played well tonight. We played well all year, 46. but tonight he's really yep. been a standout. So that will snap eight consecutive incompletions, a four-yard catch. His third tonight be second and six from the 46-yard line. Oh, 
8.06 and counting left here to play. It's still 10-6 Rams. Centennial with the ball. Copas with the hard snap. Rams don't move. Coach Richard Starrett looking for an audible. Hands it off to Lozano, oh. and he is wrapped up. Logan Slayton and Ricky Johnson right there. He went nowhere. It might be all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. They get, oh my gosh, that's a great, <laughs> that's a, I don't, that's a that ball was mark. not, that's a horrible spot. <laughs> Two yard loss, third and eight. <clears throat> Sorry. So just 29 yards on 15 carries now for Lozano. Less than two yards a carry, Coach. Third and eight from the 40, 46, 47. Fires, looks, completes, but it might be short, but they're going to go it for is it. short. Yeah. Nick Gonzalez there. Carson Eldridge on the catch. Boy, in this game, Seven yards. As, as rapidly as this game's moving, I think you have to go for that on fourth down here. Fourth and one. Fourth and, fourth fourth and a good three. Oh, fourth and a good three, actually. Yeah. Sorry. That ball was spotted not where I thought it was no. going to be. So five yards on that play. All right, fourth and three from the 43. Can the Rams defense stop them? Copas looks. Fires, incomplete, and a flag. And a flag against Nick Gonzalez, pass interference. When that ball was nowhere near him. Boy, that might, you know, that might be another one that gets waved off. I don't know. No. Nope. Pass interference. You know, I don't know because I've been out of this game for a long time. Do they have a catchable ball rule in, um, in, 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 in high school? No, okay. but Nick Gonzalez never did turn around. I think he Got did it. have a okay. hand on the receiver and never turned around. Absolutely. So they're going to call that. So that's going to go to the 28-yard line. And again, it'll be a fresh set of downs. What happened to the last fresh set of downs? They had to go for it on fourth down. So here we go again. Yep. So the Rams had a personal foul on a third and long on an incompletion, then on a fourth and three on an incompletion, another personal foul. So the Rams defense has given up 30 yards and and personal fouls here on this drive. Can they keep them out of the end zone? 6.22 left in the game. This is a crucial 28 yards, and that's going to be a false start. Should be a false start. Offside oh, on us. Offsides against the Rams. So that's 35 yards they've on just given them on this, on this drive alone. This We've drive talked alone. about Centennial stubbing their toe with penalties. It's been the Rams' defense stubbing their toe here. So 23 makes it first and five now. You know, the, 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 the positive thing is that they can't settle for a field goal. They have no. to get the ball. They the have to go for the end zone. And the, because and of Jules' wonderful defense. kick. Oh, my God. That, that might have saved the game right yes. there. Well, it certainly changed the game, that's for sure. Yep. It changes Centennial's whole mindset on offense and our mindset on defense. All right, here we go. First and five from the 23. Copas, ooh, high snap, has to corral it. He looks, pressure there, looks, up. Is that intercepted? Are they calling that a first down? Oh my gosh, I thought it was intercepted. Boy, they had to take that out of our hands because I thought we were there. I know. So Eldridge again on that one, all the way down to the 15 yard line. Uh, yeah, so eight yards on that play, but it does give him a first down. Man, that was a 50-50 ball that I thought the Rams right. came down with. So here because we go, first we had great pressure on the quarterback. Oh yeah, RJ Green again, <laughs> pressure against Copas, but he's able to get it up, and that was a really just a 50-50 ball. Yeah. And good on Carson Eldridge bringing that one down. So 544 and counting. First and 10 from the Rams, 15. Four point lead for Garces. Copas looks, he's corralled and he's gonna be brought down. Johnny Lester, Ricky Johnson, Ricky Johnson and Johnny that. Lester with the sack. Was that a sack, was that behind the line of scrimmage? Yes. Yes it was, Four so that's yards. another sack for the Rams. Assisted by number 54, Jonathan Lester. Johnny Lester. Along with Ricky Johnson, back to the 19, second and 14. So the defense doing their job again. 5.09 counting. 
left here in the fourth quarter. The Rams clinging to a 10-6 lead. The defense has got to keep them out of the end zone. Well, under five it is, minutes. It is a four down territory. You, you got to down by four right now for Centennial. Man in motion, Copas with the ball, fires, looks outside, looks for Eldridge, incomplete. Um, I think it's complete, but oh, just ran out of bounds. Oh, did he catch it? Well, let's see. Yep, they move, they're move. they moving the, uh, yep, two the yards. sticks. Third and 12 from the 17 after just two yards on that play. Clock is stopped at 448. Centennial down by four. It's a 10-6 Garces lead here. And we've got a timeout. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. GSMSN here on the Garces Athletic YouTube channel. Trevor Horn along with John Finucchi. we got a huge third down here. Third and 12 for Centennial on the Rams 17-yard line. 448 left here. Garces leads 10 to 6. You're not going for a field goal here. Absolutely Four down not. territory. So they got two plays here. Copas fakes, fires. He's looking for Santiago again. Cage Williams. Keeping... Jackson Santiago out of the game. That is the biggest target probably in Kern County. Absolutely. And he does not have a catch tonight. Absolutely. And he does not have a catch tonight. No. And it's not because he's dropped the ball. It's not because the defense, I mean, the quarterback hasn't thrown the ball. It's because Cage has done such a wonderful and job. The front six and the front six has forced Copas to Absolutely. throw balls that he normally wouldn't. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Four and 12 at the 17, 442 left here. Copas drops back, he's getting pressured, he fires, intercepted! Jack Froelich at the five yard line, and he's off to the races. He's still going, ladies and gentlemen! He's to the 30, to the 25, to the 10! Touchdown, Garces! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Do we have a penalty? No way. Are we calling it a touchdown? We better be calling that a touchdown. I lost one of my stat sheets and I don't even think I care right now. Okay, he was pushed out of bounds. So the touchdown is called back, but it is still an interception for Jack Froelich and the Rams with their fifth turnover tonight. Go, 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 go. go and get it. eighth in the last two games. And that's, that's pretty amazing. Eighth turnover in the last two games. The wind just started blowing on us, ladies and gentlemen. I got excited and everything started to go. You so the Rams. It. Okay, you got it? We got it. Here we go. Garces with the ball at midfield. Austin Hernandez. It's about five yards there. Five, that drive started at the 47, first and 10. Five-yard run for Austin up to the 43, so four yards, second and six. So, so like I said earlier, what you want to tell the offensive line is, we need a we we're in a four minute drill here right here. We need to get first downs and we need to get them on the ground. What an interception by Jack Froelich. And run back after My the interception. Goodness. 
Second and four from the 42. You're right, bro. Hernandez with the ball, there trying to get it, and there is there a first is. down, a very crucial first down. Keep that clock moving. Hey, and then we got a little extracurricular going on. You know they're going to get a little chippy there at the end. That's okay. Everybody get away. No harm, no foul. That wind's starting to pick up a little bit. That, that Those 90-degree days are now done, Coach. Absolutely. Thank goodness. It feels good, doesn't it? It does. I want to put a hoodie on now. So the Rams and, up to the 37-yard line. This is what's important. Six yards. Keep on that, that clock game. running. If they, if they're going to use their, you know, if they're going to use their timeouts, force them to use their timeouts. Hundred percent. Keep that clock running. Couldn't agree with you more, Coach. So 3-12 and counting here. The Rams with the ball, four-point lead here against the Centennial Golden Hawks on Senior Night. Last home game of the regular season for the Rams. They'll play next Thursday at Stockdale in the regular season finale. Gola with Hernandez in the backfield. Quads to your bottom half of your screen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna let this one tick all the way down. 2.49 and counting. Both uh, Centennial with just two timeouts. Hernandez cuts, finds a crease all the way past the 20, down to the 19 yard line. Yard, longest run of the game. And I don't wanna say it. 18 yards on that carry, coach. Am I going to say it or are you going to say it? Keep that clock running. <laughs> if the Rams are able to punch this one in, we can call this one good night and absolutely, senior night absolutely. celebration But we're, but we're not Rams. ready to do that yet. Because, not just uh, yet. Um, Centennial still has two timeouts left. Um. Gosh, that looks like your brother David walking down the field. That is up. my brother David. It is your brother David. Down there. All Absolutely. right. Absolutely. I was going to say that looks just Absolutely. like him. Absolutely. All right. First and ten at the 19 for the Rams. And Logan Slayton, after getting about maybe a yard to the 18. You got to believe that um, that if that Centennial is going to start to use their timeouts. And you've only got two. Yep. But you got to take them at some point because Absolutely. you're down by four. And, 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 and the clock is running. I don't know what the Centennial coaching staff is thinking right now. You take a timeout here, you take a timeout on third down. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of flabbergasted here. Well, Under 30, I mean, do you want to lose this game and go D2? <laughs> I'm sorry, but are you trying to lose this game and go D2? My goodness. Slayton with the ball up to the 15-yard okay, line, there's and there's your timeout. timeout. But goodness gracious, I mean, if, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything. I really don't. <laughs> but I'm so confused. Well, you know. Coach, I'm confused. I'm seriously confused. You know, I, um, I, I, know, I know that coaches have different philosophies as far as timeouts are concerned. But I always believed you use the timeout as quickly as you can because let's say we that, run the that, ball that, here. that we drop the ball here. Well, if we drop the ball with a minute and 50 seconds left in the game, it's a lot differently than move, dropping the ball with a minute and five seconds left yes. in the game. So we got 111 left here in the right. fourth quarter. Centennial finally calls a timeout. It is third and six. They obviously know that Jules Strzinga can kick a field goal. Yep. Especially inside the 20 yard line. Yep. Well, of course, if he, if he kicks a field goal, they then still need a touchdown either. They way. still need a touchdown Absolutely. regardless. It's still Absolutely. seven points. Okay, so I will take back what I said. I do apologize. I was just so baffled in the moment. I didn't know what was going on. Well, again, I just think you use it with a minute and 50 Not rather a minute than and a 11. minute and 11. Yep. Uh -huh. All right, so Gola with trips to his right. Hernandez in the backfield with him. Looking for the hard count. Centennial doesn't jump. Clock is stopped. It's a four-point lead for the Rams. Hernandez. And they'll stop the ball. And they'll stop it right now. Okay. A penalty, a flag on the play. Procedure on Procedure us. Procedure against us. So third and 11 from the 20. So that benefits Centennial greatly there. Right. So that took three seconds off the clock. So we're at 308. Well, it shouldn't, though. It, if it was a procedure penalty, it Hold should on. go back to a minute and 11. Yep, 111 on the clock. Yep. 111 on the clock, Nick. Correct. 
So we're waiting for 111 to be put back on the clock. All right, so there it is. Sam does his job like he always does. Absolutely. So 111 left here. Third and 11 from the 21 now for the Rams. Actually, from the 20. Gula, Gola, excuse me, looks. He's got backside pressure. They're going to call a hold there. But Gola's still going, looking for a seam. Past the 15, finally corralled there. Jaden Hernandez. Was there a flag on the play? I thought there was in the back. Nope. I thought there was back here. Nope. Maybe I'm just so used to seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> we have a timeout. So Gola gets the ball down to the 15, a five-yard run. What do we do? Do we kick a field goal here and go up by seven? <sighs> Fourth and six from the 15. Obviously, if you kick the field goal, they have to score. Well, they have to score but, anyway. But you also got to look at the fact that Centennial has no timeouts. That's right. And would have to march the entire length of the field. Correct. So just go for it. That's correct. Try to put it away. Try to make it a good point. Try to put just put it away. Because what's going to happen here? You lose the game? I mean. Yeah, well, I understand. Well, here, okay, so here I it understand is. Exactly you, you kick the field saying. goal and you make it. It's a seven point lead with about 50 seconds left. <laughs> You kick the field goal and you miss it, and it's a four-point lead, and they got 80 yards. If you go for it, maybe you get up to the 10-yard line and make it 90 yards yeah. or 85 yards in front of them. So really, you kind of for Gola, you kind of look at it every which way but loose, and you go, what's it going to hurt if we take a shot at the end zone, try to take a two-score lead, and basically ice this one, put this one out of reach? Right, right. Because with no timeouts, 54 oh, seconds, and you've – Oh, oh my gosh! Well, wow. I mean, that makes and that makes it. It's all. Uh, that's ball game, folks. That's right. That's a personal foul against Centennial, 15-yard variety. Actually, it's of the seven and a half-yard variety, so that's going to go to the eight-yard line. That's going to be first and goal, automatic first down. And the Rams, the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you can hit a knee. You, you can, can hit, hit a knee. knee Victory formation. Garces right. will win here on Senior Night, 10 to six. Great job by the Garces defense tonight. Did their job. Jules Strazinga with the money 42-yard field goal. And the Rams are victorious tonight in the victory formation. 10-6. Not the outcome you thought you'd see tonight, but you're excited about it. The Rams get their first league win of the year, and they get a chance to go into next week's road finale. Try yep. to get back to 500 and looking for momentum going into the playoffs. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final broadcast at GMSN here for the season. My name is Trevor Horn. I appreciate every one of you guys for listening this year. For John Finucchi, Jay, Trevor, th thank Diana, you so much, Trevor. Cooper. I really appreciate it. Guys, we thank you so much. It's such a great evening. This is such a great environment. High school sports is the best thing going. For our president, Kent Hickey, our principal, Noel Leon, athletic director, Eric Coleman, assistant athletic director, Christy Walker. I'm Trevor Horn. God bless. Have a great night. Go Rams! And go Rams.